There we go. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Just want to make sure. Brian got a soon TM. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Happy time zone to everybody. Welcome in. Um, Matt, thank you for the raid, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, I, it looked like you were having fun uh, today, so being the dragon and all. Um, so tomorrow is tomorrow is my affiliate versary, which is why <laughs> hi Biggs, which is why uh, all the little hats are available. Um, they do they started a day early, so thank you all for the affiliate anniversary love. I really really appreciate that. Um, and I'm super super excited today. We have a brand new huge release of Firebot uh, that we are about to push out to all of you. Um, we've been working on parts of this version for over a year now. Um, the first bits of it I was testing back in the beginning of December of 2022 um, when I had my last stream anniversary stream and we were raising money for Able Gamers and I wanted to add the, um, the charity stuff um, for Twitch's first party charity alerts into the bot. Um, it was originally much smaller until someone got hyped. It wasn't just bugs, it was features too. Also, hello ever, thank you. Um, and hello Warder. Uh, let's see, who all do we have so many folks that are here. I saw Flamingo and Liz and Wisty. Biggs, Ghosty is here. Uh, of course, Matt and Brian coming in on the raid. Um, Arblane, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, uh, Tom's here, Dragon's here, Warder's here, Ever's here. Uh, we just got all kinds of... That do be your name. It's true. It's true. Um, actually, Flamingo, we were having a lovely conversation in Ever's channel yesterday about uh, about what every person would be as a bird, and of course, you had Flamingo because well, it's in your name. Uh, so, Matt, thanks for the lurk, buddy. Go get some lunchies. Go take care of yourself. Do all of your post stream self care. Do that and say hi to Aaron for me. Alf, welcome in. Um, but yeah, welcome in everyone. Um, so yeah, we started working on this release um, over a year ago. Um, there have been some changes uh, underneath under the hood um, that we've kind of had to adapt to, um, and we also um, <laughs> that's fantastic, Tom. That's beautiful. Uh, Parsec is broken. Oh, that's fun. Um, but we, we've been working for quite a while on this set of features because we wanted to try to get it as, as right as we could on the first, uh, coming out of the gate, um, for the first release of it. So, um, we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to go over. Um, but first, uh, we got to get a release out. So let's, uh, let's do that. Hey, look, it's Firebot. <laughs> And it looks a little different. Yay, Spectre, welcome in. All right, let's go. So um, just to talk a little bit about our process and sort of how we work. Um, we have uh, Firebot's open source. It's hosted on GitHub. Uh, if you go to our website at firebot.app, um, and I many of you already know this because you're here from the Discord. Um, but if you go to firebot.app, there is a link on the top right where you can go to the project on GitHub. Everything we do is open source. Um, what not ever, that was great. Um, so we work, uh, we have a, a, a specific workflow that we use. Um, so our master branch, which is the primary branch for our code, that's what we call our stable branch, right? That's where we know when we're ready to release a version, everything for that version goes into the master branch. And then we have workflows that kick off to build and queue up a release for us. For our working stuff, we work out of the V5 branch. That's our current code. Um, so you can see right here that uh, the V5 branch is currently 218 commits ahead of master. That means we have contributed code. We have checked in code 218 times onto this branch ahead, like since the last stable release. Um, now, some of these have been small, some of these have been huge, um, but 
clearly we are well ahead of our last stable release here um, just because of all the stuff that we've packed into this new release. Um, so what we'll do at this point is we're ready to release. We know that this is uh, where we have high confidence in the feature set and the stability and everything. Um, hi, Dennis. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a pull request open so that we can merge the V5 changes onto the master branch. So we're gonna call this V56060 for this particular pull request because this is a release. We don't have to fill out the particulars. Um, and then we create the pull request. And we'll go in here. We'll, we have all of it here. Um, and you can see there is just a ton of stuff that's in here that we have changed and updated and everything else. Uh, Biggs, if you're still out there, uh, would you like to go press the button? Because that would be a ton of fun. Um, so eBiggs, he's uh, one of our, he's he's on our core, our core dev team. Um, he's been with Firebot for many, many years now. Um, and he's, uh, he's, he, well, he's pretty great. He's pretty great. Multi-user quotes, you stop that, Warder. You stop that. It's on the backlog, but it's not in yet. You request my pull, you stop that. It needs to be a big red button. I, I know, I wish we had a big red, but actually I could make that happen. I could make that happen. All right, Biggs has approved our changes. We're gonna merge this in. Confirm the merge, here we go. It's on the back of the backlog, yeah. So now we have merged all of the changes from our V5 branch, our working branch, into the master branch, our stable branch. So when we go here now, we can go to V5. And because of the merge commit, you can see now V5 is actually behind master. We'll fix that in just a minute. That's not a big deal. Um, so that's merged in. We have actions that kick off automatically in this instance whenever we commit code to the master branch. And that includes building and drafting a release. Um, so a couple of versions, I think it was 5.5.9.0, I think it was. Um, we now support Mac OS. So we actually build releases for Windows and um, Linux like we have been. We now build for Mac OS as well. Um, so we wait for all of those to finish and those will take just a few minutes to finish. 59, I think, yeah, I think you're right too. I think you're right too. Elena, thank you for the, the happy affi the affiliate anniversary. Yeah, GitHub Actions is, is fantastic. It's really, really great. Um, we actually have some stuff in place too. If you would like to contribute code to Firebot, um, helping to fix a bug or implementing a feature, um, then uh, whenever you open that pull request, we also do a little bit of linting to basically just meaning that we make sure that our code uh, looks a certain way. Um, it fits certain standards like spacing, uh, how we you know do like um, uh, semicolons at the end of lines and indentations and things like that. So, um, but that stuff uh, will happen on the pull request. That's all done now. So now we go in and we wait for the build to complete. The Linux build is the one that goes the fastest um, because it's got just less stuff that it has to do. <laughs> hi, Viv. Uh, hi, Sir Hater. Uh, with this release, translate system commands, you will be able to edit the description of system commands in this release, yes. And we are gonna go over all of the changes that are in this release after the build completes uh, because there's a lot. There's a lot of changes in this release. Um, it's, oh boy, there's so many things. Um, but we have on our backlog, uh, the ability to edit system command descriptions is there. So if you would like to put something in your own language like uh, Portuguese, for example, then you can edit that and that should show up on your commands page on the website when you use the commands link. You'll also be able to edit or translate the stream marker command chat outputs as well. Yes, that is also in this release. 
Yep, that's it right there. Uh, so let's go see. Okay, the Linux build is already done. It's, again, that's usually the fastest one. Um, the Windows run takes a little bit longer, and so does the Mac run. Mac's already building, which is good. So let me go over some of the technical bits just a little bit. So uh, Firebot is a desktop app, right? It's a download, you run it on your PC, unlike CloudBots where you go to a website, set it up, say, hey, bot, join my channel, etc." cetera. Um, so Firebot uses a technology called Electron. Electron is just a packaged way to build desktop applications using web technologies, things like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, things like that. Um, on top, the stuff that you see um, so like the Firebot windows, those are all basically Chrome. They're essentially Chrome with all the Google stuff taken away. Um, it's just the actual engine, like rendering and JavaScript engines that are there. Um, and then underneath, it's a technology called Node.js. And Node.js is just a, a, a desktop framework for running applications, but using JavaScript as the language. So again, we're using web technologies to build a desktop application, um, which means it's uh, really nice to be able to um, go and uh, edit stuff and, and uh, create you know, UI and things like that with technologies that we already know. Bigs, don't you? No, Bigs, we're code frozen. We're on code freeze. You stop that. We update uh, the GitHub's actions used with the new client ID. Um, we updated it in V5 branch. So yeah, it works on the nightly. So we updated secrets. Secrets got updated. There's the for that. So we should be good. Perry, don't you nope in here. Don't you do it. All right, so Mac is done. It is uploading the build artifacts, just the stuff that it finished building. Yay. Don't you do it, Perry. Don't you dare. You know, I've been waiting for this one. This is, this is a big one. This is a particularly special uh, release for me. I'm really excited about it and all of the stuff that we were able to add into this. <gasps> Mama Zach, hi, thank you. Good to see you. Oh, it's your first time chat. <gasps> oh, that's fun. Well, I bet you do, buddy. This one, yeah, we've, we, uh, we did a lot in this one. We've, we've done, we did a lot, a lot of stuff in this release and, um, uh, part of it is just we, you know, life got to a point to where we could, you know, get to this again. And um, we had the time and we had the motivation and the, the inspiration to get some stuff done, which is great. And let's see. All right. The Windows stuff is finished building now. Um, but we also, there's some stuff that we're going to go over in just a few minutes that I wanted to kind of address with everyone because we know there are going to be some things that are there are going to be some minor annoyances out of the gate with this one but we wanted to make sure that we made it up to everyone because um you know we the past year has been kind of kind of tough on the team we haven't been able to work on uh firebot as much as we would like and um, now that we have the some more time and everything again, um, we wanted to make sure that we made this one a really special one to kind of make up for the stuff that we just haven't been able to do for the last several months. Oh yeah, make sure you have a backup. Make your backups now. Yep, that's and that's the thing, Alf. Is some of this stuff is is necessary and you know it's mandated by Twitch. Like Twitch says, hey, this is. For apps like yours, this is what we have to do. Um, back up your backups, yeah. That too. Um, but for stuff like this, like Twitch says, hey, this is the way it's gotta be now. And, you know, it's 
there are some trade-offs uh, initially, but it works out in the long term for us, I think. All right, now once all the builds complete, we have a process that will automatically uh, draft a release for us. Take your backups and save them on paper. Yeah, write them all down. Uh, Kitty, welcome in. Thank you, thank you. Good to see you. All right, we're doing that. Let that do its thing. And that should only take a minute or so. Just pulling the files. Get your floppy disks out. And graphics level. No. No, I will not tune up the graphics on level three. Level three is a throwback level, Brian. Um, all right, so there we go. So now at this point, the release is almost done. We've brought the code over from our working branch into our stable branch. Everything has built for all three platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac. And now we've also drafted the release. So when we go back here and go look at our releases, you can see we have a draft release here that has a template for how we do our release notes. And then the script automatically puts in all of the, uh, like a lot of the changes that we have in here. Um, and this, is, this isn't nearly everything. So I have been keeping notes on this for, uh, God, for weeks now, uh, because we've been working on this for quite some time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna copy all of these notes and we'll, we'll look at them together in just a second. I'm gonna edit this, go here, and then just above the install instructions, we're gonna paste all of that in. And do a quick preview, make sure everything looks good. And it looks good, okay. All of that looks great, I'm happy with that. We make sure we set up our tag on the master branch because that's our stable branch. And now, we can set this as the latest release and publish release. Um, your phone, crazy trying to ask. <laughs> that's okay, Kitty, that's okay. Listen, Firebot does a lot of things really well. Um, and one of those things is being able to restore from backup when things go amiss. I've had to do it. Plenty of us have had to do it. So that's why it's always important to keep your backups in a safe place. Um, okay. Uh, we are about to release Firebot 5.60.0. Oh. That's it. It's out. It's done. Ship it. It's There it is. We're done. We did it. So 5.60.0 is now out. If you close and reopen Firebot, it will let you know that an update is available and then you can install it now or you can wait until you close Firebot a second time for it to automatically update. It, it, out, out, exactly. Um, so let's go over some things in the release notes. The first thing here is, let's see if I can, yeah, let's, up, yeah, okay. So Firebot now uses Twitch's new app login system. Now we have a call out here um, to talk about this. And before we go over that, I'm gonna do the last thing that we need to do to make this release officially official, and that's posted in the Discord. Now I had to take all of these notes here because this won't fit in a, in a single Discord post. We had to condense it down incredibly to make it fit into a single Discord post but we're ready to go. We've had this all queued up now for uh, the last couple of days. And we send, and there we are. It has been posted to the Firebot News Channel. 5.60.0 is officially out. Um, and we're done with that. All right, so let's look at a few things. So first, Firebot now uses Twitch's new app login system. What does that mean? So Twitch has a new system called Device Code Flow. Um, 
if you've ever logged in to a streaming service on a gaming console or a smart TV or something like that where you don't put your username and password in on that device. They give you a code that's like six to eight letters or numbers and you go on your phone or your laptop, or your tablet or whatever. You go to like say netflix.com slash activate. You put in the code, you log in on that device and then once you're logged in, it automatically refreshes on your TV to know that you're logged into whatever that streaming service account is. This is a very similar kind of uh, workflow. Hi, Batsy. So this is a very similar kind of workflow um, where when you go to log in in Firebot, and, um, and I can we can show you this real quick. Uh, well, let me see if I can. Let me pull up. Let me pull the sandbox up. I like the sandbox. I have a nice sandbox environment where I can do these kind of things. All right. Let's go here. Let's go to firebot.app. And we can download the latest release. There it is. We keep, keep, and we open. Congratulations on being awake, Batsy. All right. We'll allow Firebot access to the network. We're going to get started. We can add our accounts. So. This will let us connect our streamer account. And again, we get a code now, right? Now there's still a link here. If you're logging in with your streamer account and you're on the same PC and you're already logged into Twitch in your browser, you can just click the link. Or in this case, I can copy it. I can go down here to another browser that's off screen, go and immediately activate. And you can see, I can show you real quick what that looks like on Twitch's side. It's again, you just have a, the code here and you click activate. You get the same permissions that you would normally uh, get when Firebot asked you to log in before. You click Authorize, and that goes away. And now that it's done, boom, I'm logged in with my streamer account in Firebot. Um, so that's the that's really what the workflow is. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little different than it used to be, where it has the code instead of you, you know, just logging in directly in your browser, but same basic thing happens. Um, don't need overlays right now. We can skip that for now. We're all set. And, and now we're done. Um, also, if you noticed, our login screen got a nice little facelift. Um, Biggs went through a couple weeks ago and he did a ton of work around our UI and just giving it a nice refresh, doing some things with the login screen here to make it a little more user friendly. And it hasn't changed in a while. We figured it was time for a little refresher. So we, uh, we got the new login screen going again, when you log in with the bot account, same kind of thing where you have, uh, your code that you enter on the website and we just, you know, we just wait, um, for you to do that. We can cancel this, no big deal and then go out. Uh, and of course we had the notification that we sent out yesterday just to let everybody know about the updates. So that's really what the big login flow change is like. Now there are some advantages to this. Um, we don't have to maintain a, what's called a client secret, which is really like a password for the application for Firebot to use to say, Hey, I want to go in and do, you know, login as this user. We don't have to do that in Firebot anymore. We haven't done that for quite some time, um, but we this new workflow is is a little different in the way that it works. Um, so we had to change things up a little bit. Now, I know one of the things that people have found a little frustrating uh, in the last um, several months with Firebot is occasionally you will lose connection to either your streamer or your bot account. Um, hi, Gannett. Thank you. Um, so this new system helps to alleviate a lot of that. Um, this new system uses what's called refresh tokens, which is similar to what we were doing before, um, with a very old login flow that we used to have. Um, but what happens is when you log in, 
we get a we basically get a little token, a little um, string of text that says, "Hey, I am I I want to get things from Twitch. Here's who I am." Um, but that only lasts for about four hours now. We also get a refresh token that when that first one expires, we can get a fresh set. So then we can get that refresh token. We could use that refresh token, get new access tokens to get stuff from Twitch, stay connected and everything. And then we get another refresh token to use when that one expires. And this just goes on for, again, about every four hours is uh, the time limit on those. Um, so the new system helps to alleviate the having to log out and back in with your accounts a great deal. However, because of this change um, that Twitch said, they, this is what your kind of apps have to do, um, we, do, we did have to change what's called our client ID. Basically our thing that says, this is our app. This is the app that we are. Um, so the previous client ID that we had been using um, had a client secret uh, that was associated with it. The new one does not, and it's designed to not need one. However, in order to be able to refresh those tokens every four hours and not include a client secret and follow Twitch's um, mandate for being able to log in properly, we had to get a new client ID. So as far as Twitch is concerned, Firebot 560 and up is a brand new app. Um, yes, if you if it has been about 30 days of inactivity, like if it's been about 30 days since you've used Firebot, you will have to log in again. But for most folks, that's kind of an expected change. Like most services are like that as it is. So, um, I mean, even if it's been a couple of weeks, you can log in uh, or you can reopen Firebot. You'll get refreshed automatically and everything continues to work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so... With this new system, we no longer have to maintain that app password versus, you know, like the streamer username and password. We no longer have to maintain that, but to Twitch, uh, from the way their system works is Firebot 560 is basically a brand new app, which means that channel point rewards that you created or edit or use the update channel reward effect with in previous versions of Firebot, you can no longer do that directly with Firebot. Now, um, so here's here's the thing, okay? Uh, again, advantages to the new system, yes, the new login method is designed to reduce the number of times you need to re-log in, right? Um, now again, you will have to re-log in after the update the first time, um, just because the stuff that we had before doesn't work with the new system, so, you go in, you log in with your streamer and bot accounts if you have a bot account. Pretty standard stuff that we're all used to. Um, so here's the thing with channel rewards. Third-party applications, meaning things that are not built and owned by Twitch, um, can only edit the channel point rewards that that app creates. Because Firebot 560 is it appears to be a new app. It's different than previous versions of Firebot. You can no longer edit and maintain those rewards directly in Firebot. Now, effects will still work, okay? Any effects that you have, aside from modifying the reward itself, things like your um, the cost, the number of channel points that you use, uh, the cooldowns on it, the color, the title, the description, things like that. Um, you can't do that, but everything else will continue to work. So if someone has a channel point redemption, like I have the yay, which plays the, the sound and shows the confetti, that still works fine because that doesn't change the redemption itself. It just triggers other effects that happen. Okay. If you do have things that modify the channel reward, or you would like to be able to modify that reward from inside a Firebot, you will have to recreate it. We have an easy way to do this, okay? In Firebot, when you go to channel rewards in the left-hand sidebar, you can see all of my rewards that I have here, okay? Now, for the ones that are were created outside of Firebot or with previous versions of Firebot, 
you'll see a little lock icon, which means we can't edit the actual reward itself. It means we can't turn it on or off. We can't pause or unpause it. And we have a notification here and you can see how you, you're able to do this, okay? It's really easy. So I have this pause menu here and I wanna be able to go in and actually edit the reward like I used to. All I have to do is right click and duplicate. It creates a brand new one inside of Firebot from Firebot. You can see that it doesn't have the lock next to it on the copy. You can see I have the options to be able to enable or pause it, to delete it if I want to. I can go in and change the name, description. The only thing I can't change in here, which again is a Twitch limitation, is the icon. But it maintain, if you look down here, you can see it also maintains the effects as well. Okay, everything else stays the same. The only things that you'll need to change are the name and updating the icon if you have one. That's it. After that, you can go to Twitch and you can delete the old one. Now, I would recommend creating your duplicates first, leaving the copy name on there so that you know which one is the new one, and deleting the old one first before you rename the new one. That way you don't have any confusion and you don't you know, have to go through the process multiple times. Um, but again, I have something like this you pick list here, right? And if I duplicate it, I made a copy down here, everything but the icon carried over and all of these effects that I had are still here on the new reward. That's it. And I can just go into the, my Twitch dashboard and delete the old, um, uh, rewards. Now I'm going to delete these that I just created cause I don't need them, but it's, you know, it's something that's pretty quick and easy to be able to recreate those channel rewards. So no big deal. I, we know that's a little inconvenient. We know that's, you know, we know there are a lot of folks that have a ton of channel rewards and that's going to take a, you know, several minutes for some of some folks to be able to go through and just, you know, create and create the new ones, delete the old ones. Um, Right, and that's the thing, uh, Spectre. Uh, if you have, if you're on the new version, because Firebot five six zero appears to be a new app from Twitch's perspective, you will have to go through this process and duplicate your rewards and delete the old ones if you want to edit them inside of Firebot, or if you want to update your channel rewards using the update channel reward effect. Um. I, I I would love to see that, Alf. I would love that. That would be great. About 25 channel rewards. It took about 10 minutes. Oh, so, like a, so that's not, and that's not terrible. That's not terrible. So again, we know it's, there's some inconvenience here. Um, Louie, good to see you, pal. Good to see you, buddy. Um, yeah, fixed channel rewards, any percent. Uh, so we know that there's some inconvenience there. We totally understand. Like, you know, a lot of us are streamers too. I mean, I, you can see I've, I've got all these rewards and all of these rewards from here up, I had to do the same thing with. I had to go through and recreate all these rewards. It took me about five minutes for the 11 rewards that I have up there. Um, but again, we know that still takes time that, you know, as creators, we don't have all the time in the world. So, it, right, exactly, Dragon. We were, we were just going over the duplication process. Um, so she's the reward. So it changes the new one. Yes. Yes. Perry. Um, if someone has effects elsewhere and find right, that dynamically adds channel reward cost is duplicating, deleting, older renaming the work as long as the name is exactly the same. No Colette. That is an excellent question. So we have this here as well. Um, uh, that's why we have this this sentence here. After recreating any affected rewards, so once you've duplicated, deleted the old ones, renamed the new ones, and set them like set up like their name and icon the way you want them to. After recreating any of those rewards, you will also need to update any instances of the update channel reward effect to reference the newly created rewards. We don't maintain rewards by name. We maintain them by their ID from Twitch. Every re channel point reward gets a unique ID. And in order to prevent any kind of issues with rewards that may be named the same, 
we maintain by the unique ID. Um, so uh, you will have to go update those instances of the update channel reward effect, unfortunately, um, just because they have a new ID now and we won't recognize the old ID and we couldn't work with the old ID because it was created in a previous version of Firebot. Um, so again, we know that this is um, and there's more technical details here on the wiki. Uh, the link to the wiki is in the release notes at the very top here. It's called out. It's also in Discord in the release uh, notification. So you can read more about it if you want to get more um, technical details about it. Um, but again, we understand. We get it. And um, we know that there's going to be some initial frustrations and inconvenience with this. We know the long-term benefits are going to be a lot better simply because we're going to be able to maintain logins and connections um, longer term. Um, and sorry about the ads, folks. It's just the way it is. Um, we know that, you know, things are going to be a little rough out of the gate, but we also know that long term we're going to have a lot of great benefits from this change. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, this is the last change like this that we have for quite some time. Um, I, I personally am, am pretty invested in this change. Um, I I did a lot of the back end stuff for this just to make sure to get it right. And we delayed the beta on this for, I don't know, a couple of weeks just to make sure that we got this process right. Uh, Cause it is a very delicate process to make sure that this is correct. Um, so we have really high confidence in this process we think it's going to be a a great thing for firebot long term in any app that uses this uh, particular login method for twitch any desktop app that does this um but it is just sort of that sorry this is just the way things are sort of things from twitch um so that's that's pretty much it for um uh, for the new login changes and give the ads a minute to finish. Oh my goodness. Let me check on something real quick. Um, okay. So again, we know that there's some inconvenience here and we're, again, we understand the frustrations, um, which is why we wanted to make this one of the biggest and best Firebot releases ever. So aside from the login changes, let's go over all of the other fun stuff that happened in this release. So uh, the big thing that we've been working on for over a year now Firebot now supports Twitch's event subsystem. So if you know anything about um, some of the technical details about how Twitch works, there are several ways that we connect to Twitch and get data from them. Um, there's the API where we ask for stuff on demand, um, getting information about like viewers and channels and you know checking what your channel point redemptions are and things like that. Um, then there's the IRC system that they have, which is how we connect to chat. Um, and the chat stuff will be eventually moving to this event subsystem as well. Um, but right now we're still using the current IRC system to connect to chat so that you can send and receive messages, etc. cetera. Um, then there was PubSub, which was their old event system that they are phasing out and replacing with event sub. Event sub gives a lot more flexibility on how you receive those that information um and they finally added this the uh the transport mechanism for desktop apps like firebot to be able to get events from event sub so we had been testing it while that had been in beta it came out in full release about middle of the year this past year 
Um, so we put it through some more of its paces and tried to stuff as much stuff into this release around that as we could, okay? Um, we're gonna go over all of that stuff in a minute, but there are some other high level things that I wanna go over as well. For example, the bot account can now receive whispers in Firebot, which means people can whisper commands to your bot in order to run them, and they don't have to put them in chat. This is great if you want your mods to be able to run things and not have it show up in chat without having to set up auto delete triggers or things like that. Or if you have some kind of an integration or a game that you're working with that you would like to have Firebot do additional effects around, you can do that as well. I know one popular integration that folks use is using Twitch with RimWorld, okay? And RimWorld is set up to where folks can send the bot messages in order to do things like purchasing like a, uh, a villager to be in their, their colony or sending you know, animals or resources or skills or whatever it may be. And a lot of folks use whispers to, to do that in order to um, not clog up their main chat. Um, hi, Mickey. Um, so uh, we can now receive whispers to the bot account. So you don't have to get them to your main account, your, your streamer account, uh, and we can process commands on them. We'll go over some more of the whisper changes in a minute because that's also some you know cool stuff that we uh, that we've done some some uh, sort of refinement around the dashboard chat view. Uh, chat view got a lot of love in this release. Um, first of all, chat now supports replies. So if someone replies in chat, like I'm going to reply to to Mickey here just say send the little my little hi if you look in firebot in the dashboard you can see this is a reply here so we now show replies and threads in firebot just like you see on twitch and if i click on the reply in this thread you can see everything in the thread not only can you see everything in threads okay so yeah there you go threads showing up in firebot and you can actually reply inside the thread as well. So if I can go here and right click, I can reply to a message and I can reply directly to it in the thread if I want to. Okay. Now, if you also notice, so Mickey's a new friend of the stream. Uh, I actually just met her yesterday. Uh, she's a friend of our good friend, Lissa T. Um, because this is her first time chatting, we now show the first time chat tag, just like you see in your, uh, your mod view or your stream dashboard on Twitch. So we also show first time chatters and we have an event for folks that chat in your channel for the very first time so that you can do things if you want to have some kind of a welcome effect list or something that you say, hey, welcome to the, welcome to the stream, glad to have you, whatever it may be. You can do that now with the first time chat event, okay? So that's all here. Um, so we'll go over some more of those changes in just a second. The dashboard chat feed now also supports cheer modes, which means when someone cheers in your channel, when they send you bits in your channel, you no longer see like just the text cheer 100 or whatever it may be. It actually shows the animated che uh, cheer mode in your channel, in your chat, along with the bit amount and the color that it's supposed to be for that bit tier level. Um, now I can show you what- the, Ice Bear is ready to Tokyo Drift. Just like that. Thank you, Biggs. Thank you, buddy. So you can see now we have the cheer mote. When you hover over it, you get the name of the cheer mote, just like you would with any other emotes in chat. And you can see that it's the 100 bits there in the the um, in the correct color, bold. Again, just like you would expect to see in Twitch chat, now in your Firebot dashboard. Um, so, Biggs, thank you again for those bits, buddy. All right, now let's get into some other big stuff that people have been asking for for ages. First, hype trains. We now support events and variables for hype trains. Dennis, thank you for the bit, buddy. Look, <laughs> Oh, it's the doodle cheer. That's the little, the little drawn bit. I love that. 
So we now support events around hype trains. When some, when a hype train starts in your channel, you will get a hype train started event. Iceberg ready to Tokyo Drift. Tom, thank you for, thank you for the. Oh, is it is it starting? Put on my hat. Tom, thank you for the bits. Thank y'all for for starting a hype train. Wizzy, thank you for gifting a sub to the community, and it went to Biggs. How appropriate. Thank you so much for that gifted sub. I really appreciate that, and welcome in. It's good to have you. So not only do we have... Um, Iceberg needs it for every day. Holy shit, like. Biggs. Biggs, thank you for the 300 additional bits. Mickey, thank you for the sub. Good gravy. Um, now let's see. Let's see this all light up on the dashboard. So you can see this is all lighting up on the dashboard now. There's all of Biggs's cheers, just like he did in chat. Um, oh, I have a, I have a a bug in one of my things here. Nice. I gotta go fix that. Um, so you can see over here in my activity feed. Tokyo Drift. <gasps> Mags, Mags, thank you for the hundred bits. You can see over here, as the hype train progresses, it shows what level and what percentage the hype train is at. So you can track that as it progresses. Proxy, Proxy, good to see you, buddy. I have some ideas for integrations. Ping me later. Ping me later, dude, because uh, we have a very, very robust plugin system, which I might show some of the stuff that, uh, that I do. Um, so, but yeah, so now we have uh, hype train uh, events for starting, progression, and ending. Um, Iceberg we, ready to Tokyo Drift. Liz, thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you for the bits, everyone. Um, we also now include a hype train level and a hype train percent variable so that I can go into my events. Let's go down to my debug. I'll delete this one because I don't need it right now. Uh, oh, that's the end. I have this one already. Let me just rename this. Iceberg is ready to Tokyo. Ended. Ah. Uh, Spectre, thank you for the bits, buddy. I appreciate it. Recently found out you stream. Th well, thank you. I appreciate that, Wizzy. Thank you. Let's go see. Uh, I can do a chat feed alert. Or actually, I'm just going to do a chat, and we'll just go. And go here. Thanks for the level hype train level hype train, everyone. I'll just send that as me. Okay. And we'll once the hype train ends, we'll see that in chat. Okay. Um, uh, I think you did. Yeah, Spectre, I think we did meet at, uh, at TwitchCon. Um, I might have, like, cause I have all of my TwitchCon stuff here. I think I might have stuff from you in my bag still. Cause I have, I got all my stuff here on the desk. You were the Ghostbusters guy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Spectre had this absolutely phenomenal ghostbusters cosplay that he did it was just mwah, it was chef's kiss oh it was beautiful it was beautiful i remember because it was out by like th this huge windowed area of the convention center oh it was so good that was spectacular bud very very proud of that very very proud um so anyway so we have hype train events now um we now have support for polls okay you can now create and end polls on your channel. We have events for when a poll starts, when it progresses, and when it ends. And for progression and ending events, we have the current winning choice name and winning choice number of votes variables. And if your poll has more than one winning choice, because in the case of a tie, then the winning choice name will come in as a comma separated list. Like um, 
option one, comma, option two, comma, option five, whatever it may be. That's, you're doing a great job. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, so we've added support for polls now. We've also added support for predictions. So you can now create a prediction. You can lock that prediction so no one else can place channel point bets on it. You can resolve that prediction to say, yep, this is the one that happened. Um, or you can cancel the prediction and say, you know what, never mind. Let's send back everybody's channel points to them. We also have events around that, around the prediction starting, progress, locked, and ended. When the, in, uh, the prediction ends, you can use the prediction winning outcome name variable to say, hey, it looks like, you know, congratulations to everyone who predicted this thing. And you can use that in your effects now as well. Uh, this one is really special to me because this is what I actually started all the event sub work for. Uh, charity campaigns. So for folks that have uh, uh, done uh, fundraising through Twitch directly, uh, I know a lot of folks do their stuff through Tiltify and other sites like that. But uh, about a year and a half ago, Twitch added the ability to do this through um, their first, their own first party system. There you go. Thanks ever for the level two hype train, everyone. See, hype train end event. Um, so, uh, for Twitch's first party charity uh, campaign events that you can set up. We have the campaign started. We have the charity donation. We have the campaign progress, which is basically when you get an update. Like so, like donation and progress typically fire at the same time. Um, what is that? That's all right. <laughs> uh, hey, look, I got a, I got one too. Choo choo! I love that. Uh, I wish we had pin chat API. That'd be fun. I like that. That's neat. I guess it is. A, yeah, maybe it is a weird owl. Anyway, um, so for campaign progress and for campaign ended. Um, so basically when you start your charity campaign, when someone makes a donation, when like the total or something updates or the goal maybe updates for that um, charity campaign. And then when the charity campaign has ended, um, we have a ton of new variables that we have added around this because we get all this information. So we have a charity name, the website, the logo, the description, the campaign goal, and the campaign total. Um, this is all stuff that I have, um, effects set up for to utilize a lot of this. Um, so that when I start a another charity drive um, on Twitch, I can use this stuff. Uh, also, the donation from and the donation amount variables now support um, the Twitch charity campaigns. So if you were using those for things like um, donations or tipping from stream elements and things like that, uh, you can use those in your Twitch charity campaigns now as well. Um, any reason Firebot shouldn't run under Windows 2019 server? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's got to be some kind of platform limitation. Might have. I. I'm not sure without looking into it. Order. I might. I might be able to spin up a VM later and see. We'll see what happens. Uh, no, Spectre. Absolutely. I love this. All right, Biggs. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for hanging out and thanks for the bits and pushing the big red button for us. Um. I haven't I've I haven't tested it on a server environment, no. No. Because I never use it. I always use it on desktop. Mm. Oh, yeah, then if no. No, then you should be fine. It should be fine. I Water Water if it if it gives you any trouble, ping me, but it shouldn't, because if Chrome runs on it then it should be fine if if recent versions of chrome run on it um okay we also support channel goals now so 
for things like your um like if you set a follower goal or a sub goal for your channel on twitch we now support those as well for starting that progression and ending it um we have a channel goal type description the current amount and the target amount variables that we've added for all of those as well um same kind of thing um so uh yeah uh the youtube tutorials man that's our 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 team member hey apple did an amazing job with a lot of that stuff unfortunately it's just been so long now and we've like so much has changed in firebot that it you know it just hasn't been able we haven't been able to keep up with it so um we do want to make more of that kind of stuff and build out like full documentation we're kind of waiting for version six because we don't want to build out so much stuff for version five and then that become outdated um, when we release version six, but we also don't have a time frame on version six yet. So we're building out the, the foundation for it now, but we just don't have like an ETA on when that's going to be done. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a great jumping off point. Absolutely. Um, all right. So that's channel goals. We now have events for when you send a shout out, a Twitch shout out to another channel and when someone else shouts you out. So we have, uh, we have events for that now. Um, the username and the variables will still work with that just like they do um, for other events where, some, where a user triggers something like a channel reward or something like that. We've also added the new viewer count variable. So when someone shouts you out, you can see that they shouted you out to, you know, 50 viewers or whatever it may be. <clears throat> um, stream online and stream offline. So we now get events from Twitch when your stream goes live and when your stream um, ends from Twitch's perspective, like when you rate out to someone. Um, so you can build events around that as well now too. Um, we have Twitch category changed and title changed events. Say you have certain things that you want to do and you want to have a set of channel rewards that you want to enable when you're playing a certain game. Uh, I'm my friend Everwin, she plays a lot of Dead by Daylight and she has specific channel rewards around that. You can set up the title changed event to where if your <clears throat> new title is, you know, your, your, the, the game that you've changed to, your category name, your game name, um, is dead by daylight, and then you can turn on those rewards. And if you change it to something else, it can automatically deactivate those rewards. Um, I also know that folks like to do things with, um, like cult of the lamb is one that people really enjoy. Um, uh, if you have like certain things that you want to do around that, when like someone redeems the, you know, um, the, uh, donate to your, uh, your cult's totem or whatever, um, and you want to have effects for that, then you can have it do that when it, you know, that kind of stuff. Like if you have preset effect lists for that kind of stuff set up, you can um, enable or disable like preset lists and things like that. So just stuff like that that you can do based on uh, category and title changes. Um, we, all, we went over the first time chat event and showing first time chatters in the dashboard. So you can see that now and have events for that. Um, we have a new effect queue cleared event along with the name and ID. Now this is a little more for advanced users, but we do have the functionality to where when you set up event, um, uh, effects in an effect queue, when that effect queue finishes running, not when you pause it, cause you can pause an effect queue for whatever reason you choose. But once everything has finished in that effect queue and it clears out, then you can have this effect run. Be careful, this is something that could get you into an infinite loop. This is an advanced use very much like the run loop effects, okay? If you put an effect queue cleared effect at the end of the queue that you want to listen for, it will put your bot in an infinite loop. Be very, very careful with the effect queue cleared event. It's for advanced use. Be Reverse. careful. <laughs> Reverse. 
Um, we also now have the toggle scheduled effect list effect. Um, scheduled effect lists are something that we introduced, uh, was it last year? Uh, maybe like a little over a year ago. Anyway, um, you see you're breaking your RAM with that. Yeah, I know you could, Dennis. Um, for those who aren't familiar, we have under time base, we have our timers, which run on an interval. Um, so every like for this one here, for instance, um, this rotating message runs every 12 minutes for me um, and requires five chat lines, etc. Um, we also have scheduled effects lists that run on ex like precise schedules. Um, so if I go in here and I can create a new one to say like every hour, every day, every month, every weekday, have effects run, only run them while live, etc. cetera. Um, where we go in and we run this, we can have this stuff run. Or uh, for those of you who are familiar with cron jobs, um, where you can set up a very specific schedule using what's called a cron tab, which is just a textual representation of a time frame. Um, then you can set this up to however you want. Uh, for example, I've got ones that um, my stream starts in very specific times, um, 7 p.m. my local time on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and I have things like run automatically for that. We now have an effect to be able to toggle scheduled effect lists on or off, depending on whatever you'd like to do. Um, don't you threaten me with a good time, Dennis. Um, Speaking of going back to whispers, commands can now be set to ignore whispers, meaning that if someone whispers you the command, it will ignore it. If you want someone to have to put it into chat or you don't want to get spammed in your whispers with, with commands for something, you can have it set to ignore whispers. Um, so there you go. Uh, if I get a whisper, so I'm going to send myself one real quick. Uh, where is my whispers? Let's go here. So I'm going to send one to my bot account from my streamer account. And you can see that I got this whisper, it was whispered to my bot. We now indicate what account received the whisper when whispers come in because we can receive whispers to both the streamer and the bot account now. Um, and we also have a variable for this, um, the, the whisper recipient variable, which will tell you whether it was the streamer or the bot account that received the whisper. So if you wanna do different things based on that. Um, we show that event here and you can also see that we've updated the event to say, you know, whatever viewer sent your bot or streamer account, the following whisper. So we can do that. We can also now hide whispers in the chat feed. If you don't want to see whispers at all, click it and they're gone. They're no longer in the chat feed. That's it. Anderson did that with CronTab, making a post request to the Stream Elements API. Yep, you can do that kind of stuff. In, you can do cron jobs essentially in uh, Firebot because it does use a standard CronTab format. Um, so there we go. The dashboard chat feed and activity feed both now indicate which account received a whisper. Whispers can be hidden. Uh, we added new variables around uh, is whisper. To, will tell you if. Uh, the command was triggered via a whisper. Um, and we also have the whisper recipient that we talked about. Uh, for cheer motes, we now have similar to how we have the, um, the emote names and URLs um, amounts and or uh, emote names and URLs. We now have cheer mote names, amounts, URLs, animated URLs and colors that come in in the order in which they came in. So they will, those will all return um, a comma separate list of whatever the cheer motes came into a message. Um, we have the new Twitch channel URL variable. So if you just want a like a nice simple way to say, hey, go you know check out this streamer, you can use the Twitch channel URL with, let's say we'll go our friend Matt Calder. 
And I can, uh, let's see if I can do one of my test commands. I can do the test command. I can go to my chat message. Go check out. And then we, when we run that, and you can see, cancel that back out. And there it is. We've also fixed an issue in the chat feed where links may not appear like and behave like links. We fixed that. Um, so all links, sh all like normal web links should be clickable um, and highlighted in the chat like that. Um, let's see, we've added for counters, we've added new counter variables. So um, counters have their own effect list and they have whenever uh, a counter changes, um, when it's updated, when it reaches the minimum or when it reaches the maximum, you are now able to use all of these counter variables, including the counter name, the counter's previous value, the counter's new value, the counter change, which will tell you how much it has changed, either positive or negative, the counter minimum value or the counter and the counter maximum value, if they have those. Um, we have a new overlay connected event and an overlay instance variable. So I know a lot of folks wanted some events around overlays, uh, say like you open up OBS and you wanna see what's going on in your overlay uh, or you wanted specific things to happen when your overlay connects. We now have events for that and I can go refresh one of my uh, overlays in OBS so that you can see that. Let's see, where's my... So I have one called the top sheet and I refresh that. You can see the top sheet overlay has connected um, and you can have event or uh, effects that run based on that event as well. And we now know also the name, the instance of the overlay um, that runs. We have added a new option in settings general to automatically open the stream preview window when Firebot launches. Now, a lot of people don't realize that we have this, but over here to the left-hand side of our chat users, these are our quick actions, okay? So we have some that are built in like give currency, edit stream info, and open stream preview. In my case, I don't use the give currency ever, so I can close that. Um, but we have the edit stream info, and we have the stream preview if you would like to open the stream preview window and um, watch the stream. <clears throat> um, so, oh yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, Kitty, thank you for stopping by. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so we now have an option that when you open the bot, it will automatically open your stream preview window so you can have that off to the side if you would like. Um, and keep that monitored. Uh, speaking of quick actions, while I'm here, you can create your own quick actions. So I can say, do this thing. And I can add some effect. Let's just add a blank log message so I have something in the list. Okay, and save it. I can change and I can rearrange that and you can see it moves up the list when I do that. And so this do the thing is up at the top now. This rearranging, we had a bug where this wouldn't persist. And when you would close and reopen Firebot, it wouldn't show it in the correct order again. That's been fixed now. And I can delete that custom action. Um, the rearranging isn't new order, but because of the bug, whenever you would do the rearranging, it, would, um, it wouldn't persist between sessions. So you would open it up and then your, um, your, the, the built-in ones would still be up at the top. <clears throat> uh, okay. System command descriptions can now be edited and those custom descriptions will appear on the streamer's commands page. Now I have my commands page disabled but you can now go into your system commands, open it up and edit. And you can see the description here is displayed on the command list webpage. 
and you can see you can edit this right in here like I can go check out all these commands save and there's the description it's saved there and you'll be able to when someone uses the commands command in your chat uh, whatever you enter into the description is what will appear on your commands page yeah the quick actions are really nice if you have stuff that you want to do like really quickly um, I don't utilize them as much as I should uh, along that same vein We've also added the ability to edit the message for the stream marker. So we have the stream marker messages that we had by default. You can now edit those um, and have them output whatever you would like to chat. So those messages can be customized now. Um, then we get to OBS. So we had a lot of requests around stuff that we do with OBS because OBS is one of our most popular integrations. A lot of people use OBS as their broadcast software. Um, and there are, there are a few events that we had for OBS and several variables that you could use for your effects. Um, is quick action support commands with counter or with a count? Um, I don't know. So quick actions are their own separate effect lists. Um, they can run a command. You can run a command from it, um, but you but they they they're they're essentially like preset effect lists, but on demand um, with the button in your uh, in your dashboard. Um, so we had a lot of stuff that we do with OBS now, um, but there were some issues that we had with a couple of the effects and. We had some requests to add a bunch more effects to the list or a bunch more events to the list because there are a lot of things that OBS can notify us about. Um, so we have added events for OBS for bring recording starts and stops. When the scene item enable state changes, basically when you turn something on or off in a scene, um, when you start and end a transition, when you have changed the current scene transition, so if you change whatever the transition is, like I have a default stinger, if I were to change it to uh, say like the like a fade or something, um, when the duration has changed, so if you you know change your fade from like say your fade's like one second, it's like I don't want I want a fast fade, so you change it like five hundred milliseconds, you get a uh, event for when the duration for a scene transition has changed. Um, when the replay buffer has saved, when your current profile has changed, so if you have different settings, say you stream on multiple accounts um, and you change your profile, you can do that. For vendor events, um, that's a more advanced use case scenario where if you have a plugin in OBS and it has events that it fires on its own, um, you can receive the vendor event and the sort of the raw data that comes around that. When you change your current um, program scene, so whatever scene that you were outputting to your stream, when you change that, you can have an event trigger based on that and uh, filter based on the actual uh, scene name. And then when you have changed your current scene collection, all of those events are now available in 5.6.0. Along with that, we have added some new variables, including the scene item ID, the scene item name, the scene item enabled state, transition name and duration, the replay buffer path for when it saves the replay buffer, your profile name, the vendor name for a vendor event so that you can filter based on only certain plugin events, uh, the vendor event type and the vendor event raw data that comes from that event. So those are all the big new things that have happened that we've released in this update. But that's a that's only about half of what it is. Um, we went over this already and you've already seen, we've done a lot of work around the UI and changing some of the, just the, the way things look, um, adding a little bit more flair here and there, um, you know, rounding off a lot of the edges. Again, Biggs did great work on the new login screen to bring it up um, to a more modern look. Um, the add new event and edit event dialogues can now search for events by name, description, or event source. 
So if I go to my events and I add a new event and I want to see all of the Streamlabs events, I can go Streamlabs in the box and there it is. If I want to see all of the OBS events, I can see all the OBS events in the box. If I want to see all of the Twitch events, I can see, type in Twitch and see all of the Twitch events that are available in the add new event dialog. All right here, just by typing in Twitch. Um, so we will search by the name of the event, the, uh, the description of the event, or the provider, in this case, Twitch. Um, if I want Tippy stream stuff, I can I type in Tippy and there it all is. I already, Pern, it's already out. It's already out. I, are, I literally already did it. Uh, we have an ad break starting. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a quick break um, while the ads are running. I will be right back, uh, and we'll uh, we'll keep going over these changes. So stick around. Okay. Uh, Lolly, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome back. Um, okay. Uh, I get it. Good to see you, pal. Oh, my God. Damn it, Patsy. Uh, okay, let's get back to the list. So, uh, searching for events by all of those fields. Um, because we're using event sub now, um, we got a, what do you mean we got a problem? Okay, we'll 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 fix it later. Okay, put it in the put it in the uh, 
Put in the mod chat, Dennis. Um, the uh, the follow event. Um, we were what we used to do uh, was we would basically hit Twitch's API uh, every few seconds and be like, "Hey, who are my latest followers? Hey, who are my latest followers?" And that wasn't a really great way to do that. And a lot of times we would either miss alerts or things just would not come in well, things like that. Um, the follow event now uses the event subsystem so that it comes in in real time. Um, and we know exactly when those events actually trigger. Um, <clears throat> similarly, uh, for cheers, for channel reward redemptions, bans, timeouts, and unbans, um, those also use event sub now. Um, we've taken them off of the old pub sub system because pub sub again is going away. So those should fire now with a little more accuracy and, um, and good data. Um, follows were the one that were really not great about that just because of the way that we had to do it. Um, the take OBS source screenshot effect. You can now take a screenshot of the currently active scene. Um, also, screenshot related effects all now have a common set of options similar to what was on um, the uh, takes the regular take screenshot effect where you could just take a screenshot of your actual PC screen. Um, we also have some enhancements that have been uh, added for posting to Discord thanks to Dennis. Um, for channel rewards, uh, if you are logged in with a non-affiliate or non-partner account, Unfortunately, channel rewards, Twitch doesn't provide those to you. You can't use channel points or reward, or you can't have channel points or rewards on your channel. Um, so we now just have a message that displays there to let folks know, hey, in order to use this, you do have to be logged in with an affiliate or a partner account. Effect outputs. Effect outputs are sort of an advanced feature where we have a few effects that use this. The HTTP effect is one of them where you can make a call out to a web service using some custom a custom request of your own and get a response back. And that, that effect uses our effect output system to, um, uh, to grab that response and use it on stuff. <clears throat> um, Effect outputs would bubble up. So if you were like nested inside of, of stuff, thank you, Mikasa. Thank you for the 500 bits. Thank you very much. And thank you for the congratulations. I appreciate that. Um, for, uh, for the effect outputs, they would bubble up. So if you had like, and some kind of event, and then I would call a preset event list. Uh, or a preset effect list and you did something in there and you had an effect output and you came back into the event itself that would that's called bubbling up where it would come up into the parent list however we didn't have a thing to where if you would go into a nested effect list like run effect list or um, running preset list or things like that where it would bubble down down the chain. So we fixed that to where effect outputs kind of follow the whole flow of uh, an effect stream now. Um, so things like, again, conditional effects, the run effect list, things like that. Uh, effect outputs from, from previous effects in like that same list will now bubble down into those um, through the execution chain. <clears throat> uh, if you use the Discord integration to post messages to Discord, um, using one of the webhook URLs. That field now supports the pre-release URL, so like Canary and PTB um, for those who use like pre-release Discord versions. It also now supports Gilded because Gilded uses the same webhook format. So if you were using Gilded versus Discord, you can now use the Discord webhook URL field to post to your Gilded channels as well. Um, the OBS, the OBS effect config dialogs now have clear messaging when the integration may not be fully configured. So if you go into an, like an OBS event and you haven't set up like your password for in uh, your OBS integration in the integration settings, um, there will be a message that says, hey, we didn't find a scene list. Um, are you sure, you know, did you configure, is the OBS uh, integration configured? 
So just to kind of remind you to make sure you go set up that stuff so that you can actually connect to OBS to get that information. Um, we updated the chat message emote names, emote URLs, um, and animated emote URLs. I got to fix that. Um, that now work with the viewer arrived event. So that previously worked with chat message and a couple of other events that now also works with the viewer arrived event. Uh, when you attempt to delete a message from the dashboard, sometimes it will fail. Um, as the streamer, you still cannot delete announcements um, from moderators. If you try to delete it from the dashboard, it will fail. It will show that it was deleted. It used to show that it was deleted even though it wasn't. Now we actually show that we pop a notification that says, hey, we weren't able to delete that message. Go check the log. Um, for VIP role updates, because VIPs always show their, they always have their VIP badge in a chat, uh, we're now using that to better detect when someone has or doesn't no longer has VIP. Um, more specifically, when it gets removed. Um, so if you have uh, filters around uh, viewer roles and um, you want to do things based on whether or not they're VIP, um, those should work better now because we now better detect when VIP roles get removed based on their chat messages. Um, we had a feature that I didn't really know about um, until recently called chat message highlight. Um, so we had a feature, we have this feature in the dashboard where we can highlight a message. Now I thought it meant like physically highlight, like change the background of the message. Um, but the intention behind this was uh, when you want to like showcase this message and, and do something you know special with it. So we've changed the wording around that because we know that that can cause a little bit of confusion with the Twitch uh, highlight message channel reward. Um, so we wanted to eliminate a little bit of that confusion because even even a couple of us were confused by that. We just you know didn't know because we're we're so in like kind of like Twitch context now. And Firebot was originally a bot for Mixer, so um, a lot of that context doesn't carry over from Mixer to Twitch. So if you want to spotlight a message, you can do that and you can have it do a certain effects based on the message. If you want to like display it on your overlay or things like that. Um, hotkeys. This was a, this was a big one that folks were asking for. Um, hotkeys now support the keys on the number pad as separate keys. So we now detect whether you put like the digits that you press for a hotkey are the digits along the top of the keyboard above the letters or on the number pad so that you can use separate number pad keys. Um, conditional effects now better handle viewer role checks when specifying a variable. Uh, we had a, a thing where if you don't specify a username for a role check, it will check the, uh, the user of that, um, uh, that particular command or whatever it may be. However, if we had something like target that evaluated to a blank, it would do the same thing, but that wasn't really the intended usage there. So to better handle that, we checked to see if someone tried to put something in that field, but it didn't come out to anything before we do the role check now. Um, this was another one. When you change your stream info in the dashboard, so if I go into the dashboard here and click the edit stream info, the category, if I change the category, this event will only uh, trigger if you actually change the category. If you update, say, your title or your tags, but you leave your category the same, the Firebot category changed event will no longer trigger. Uh, so that actually, that's, that's a little bit uh, better handling. Um, we added the detailed messaging on uh, channel rewards that can't be managed in Firebot. We went over that a little bit earlier. Um, effects that depend on services being logged in, like Twitch, are now hidden from the select new effect dialog when you're logged out. So if you open Firebot for the first time, or for some reason you log out of your streamer account, uh, your streamer and bot accounts, I should say, and you want to go add like a chat effect, you can't add it can't add a chat effect until you are logged in because you have to be logged in with one of those accounts in order to use the effect. Um, we also had a bug where if the first time you tried to do that, it hid those events, 
you logged in and you tried to go back into the dialogue box, they would remain hidden. That no longer is the case, and you can go in and those will update uh, as you log in and out of your accounts. Dan, good to see you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Um, on dialogues with multiple effects lists, think of the conditional effect dialog. You can now copy and paste effects instantly without having to copy, close, reopen it, and then be able to paste. So we fixed that bug as well. Um, context menu items now better indicate current status of an item. So we did a couple of accessibility things in this uh, release that I was uh, I, I really wanted. Um, so when you go to an event, for instance, when you right click, we no longer say toggle enabled. We will say disable event or enable event based on um, the context or in the case of a reward, we can say pause or unpause channel reward or enable or disable channel reward, things like that. So the toggle um, messages have been cleaned up to better indicate context for, uh, especially for folks who are using screen readers and need to know that context um, because they need a better uh, indicator than just a visual. <clears throat> Um, same thing, buttons in the backup manager and the moderation screen now have better accessibility labeling. Um, so on the moderation screen, we have these uh, these toggles to enable and disable, and we also have things for adding and removing roles. We've done a little bit of improvements there. And then when you go to settings, go to your backups, and you go to manage your backups, these also have better labeling on them um for accessibility for screen readers um so uh they're a little better um crystal welcome in hope you're doing well uh the read api and raw read api variables now include the firebot user agent string again very advanced use kind of things but um something that was requested uh for the overlay URL, we now display the URL correctly based on whether you're on Windows or a Linux or Mac system. Um, the internal web server um, that powers things like the overlay will now instruct browsers not to cache data, which means that if you have an overlay resource and you like overwrite the file, it sh your browser or your broadcast software should not cache that and it should play the fresh version of that sound or media file or image or whatever every time it goes to access it. So it should reduce in uh, some issues with around uh, caching. Uh, if you're debugging your overlay, um, like again, again, in OBS, you can do a little bit of debugging around your browser sources. Um, it, you can now see the actual page title. Uh, the page title for an overlay actually indicates the instance of that overlay. Um, we also changed the way we do a little bit of like our random numbers under the hood. And then we did a lot of just like under the hood, reworking our code, uh, to, you know, make things a little bit, uh, better for us long-term, easier to maintain stuff like that. Um, I'm doing all right, Crystal. I'm doing good. Uh, order. I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm, I'm getting to it, buddy. This is something that folks were, this was like a little bit of a, a pain for a while. The autocomplete list for emotes in, uh, in the dashboard, they included third parties. So if you have uh, BTTV or FFC or 7TV enabled, you could get autocomplete for that. But for some reason, Twitch didn't. So we had, we had a bug for that. Uh, we had a bug with that. Um, now, Twitch emotes show up in the autocomplete list, both the global emotes and the ones for your channel. So you have those are all in there now in in the autocomplete list. Um, we also fixed some issues with Seven TV emotes uh, where they were still weren't displaying correctly. Um, so we got that all squared away. Um, we went over the quick actions now showing in the order, the, your custom sort order. Uh, we talked about URLs actually behaving like hyperlinks. Um, 
I use the compact mode. There is the Tokyo Drift. modern mode. Crystal, thank you for the hundred bits. Happy birthday! It's well, it's 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 stream anniversary tomorrow, so thank you. Um, so we have the modern view. Um, this modern view shows uh, it will bold a message if the streamer is tagged in it. Um, the compact mode was not doing that. We fixed that, so that's actually displaying properly. Hi, Fritz. How you doing, buddy? Um, fixed an issue where adding new banned regex words would break the UI. We had an issue in this. This was the. It was such a a pain to track down because I was the one that worked on this. But when you add a regular expression to try to ban a word, okay. Um, when you would add it, the UI would mess up and you wouldn't be able to work with it again until you closed and reopened Firebot because it was just, it was just borked. It was messed up. Um, so if I put in a regex like, um, like, like this. It now shows up in the list properly. You can add another one in here, whatever you want to do. Um, but that now that has been fixed. And that's one we know where for folks who are using the band word moderation features in a sort of more an advanced way, that's, that's all fixed now. And that's all been squared away. Um, Fixed an issue where events may not fire when no filters are set and the filter mode is set to any filter passes. So this was one that Dennis, I think, found where if you have filters set up on an event and you set up the any filter, which is, you know, as long as any one of these things is true, then go ahead and, and run the effects for this event. And then you delete all of the filters. It stops working. So we had a bug around that. Uh, Dennis got that squared away for us. So thank you, Dennis, for getting that all fixed out. Uh, Ragewing, welcome in. Came for the Twitter post. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. We are we. This one, this one was a a huge one for us. This has a been a very very special update for us. Uh, bandword moderation works in the way you think it does. Yes. So the way that bandword moderation works is if we find a word. Or if you're using regular expressions, something that matches that regular expression in a message, once it comes in, we delete it. It's gone. It gets deleted. Um, first time viewers now get added to the viewer database before relevant events trigger. This was a problem where when first time folks would show up and we would have to, like the bot would set up things like uh, currency or things like that. And we wanted to, you know, add currency to a user or something like that when they would come in for the first time and they weren't already in the viewer database, it wouldn't fully add them to the viewer database before the events would fire. So there was this weird sort of like uh, a race condition where we would try to add it before they were there and it, it wouldn't work and that's been fixed now. So whenever someone shows up and you're using the viewer database, like a lot of folks are, that they're in there now. Um, this was a late one that we got fixed yesterday. Uh, where the user ID name, which is basically like the all lowercase version of your login name, um, may incorrectly return a blank value. So we got that squared away. Um, we found an issue where if using like the if variable um, that was evaluating things that it shouldn't. Um, <clears throat> chat messages sent by the streamer account. If you send a chat message that is a command and has the auto delete trigger, that will now work for the streamer account when you send it from the dashboard. We changed a little bit of how we listen for um, streamer chat messages and how streamer chat messages uh, go out. So we now will detect a streamer chat message command and automatically delete it like it should be. What that also means is that if there is an effect that is a uh, chat reply, if you're replying to that, uh, to the, the streamer for that, for whatever reason, like if you have um, like an effect set up that's uh, set to reply with whatever, um, 
as a reply, it will come in as a reply now, or it will be posted as a, a reply. Um, so that's been fixed. Uh, we had a little uh, a bug with the min wager field in the heist game. So that got fixed and we got rid of the extra little curly brace there. Um, active timers. If you have an active timer and you delete that timer before this update, the timer would still run until you closed Firebot and reopened it. That's no longer the case. We stop active timers when you delete them. Um, the OBS stream started and stream stopped events now actually fire the way they're supposed to. There was a weird things with how that tells us that they're running and we found a way to work with that a little bit better. Um, we also had a thing where uh, this came up with the Philips Hue light integration, but if you, if for integrations that don't utilize our connection manager, which is this little button down here, where you can open the connections panel and you can see things that you're integrated with, like stream elements, for example. Um, if you had an integration that didn't set, that wasn't set up for this, um, but it had some other weird stuff with it anyway, it it would cause it to go the the button to go yellow as if some things were connected but not everything was. Now that's been fixed as well. Um, the scheduled effects list, we were talking about that. Uh, we did, this is a breaking change, but this is a, a extremely small use case breaking change to where, uh, if you were using like a specific month in the advanced schedule, like the cron tab style schedule, it was using zero through 11 before, which wasn't standard. We fixed that. Um, we updated the library that we use for that, and it is now using the actual standard one through 12 for month numbers. Um, it also now supports seven for Sunday, so you can use zero or seven for uh, to indicate Sunday. Um, nightly releases of Firebot now correctly update to newer mainline versions. So if you were using a nightly release or one of the betas, you automatically get updated to the, the full release version. Um, so that's all good now. And then we had one other thing where uh, long files were a little, looking a little funky to where um, the date was changing uh, or the date wasn't changing like it was supposed to in the 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 log, like the log messages. Um, again, advanced use case, but that's uh, we got that all squared away and all, got it all fixed now. So, Balls, thank you, buddy. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, but that's that's all the big stuff. That's those are the changes. So as you can see, like there's a ton of stuff in this release. Um, we we put in a lot of time and effort to make this as one of our again one of our biggest and best releases ever. We know there was a ton of stuff in here that folks have been waiting for, especially things like hype trains, polls and predictions, um, the chat replies. Um, just fixing a lot of the stuff. Uh, you can set the Discord embed color now. You didn't put it on my list. I blame you. Listen, if if that's all we missed, that's not bad. That's not bad. Actually, let me go in and fix the one uh, typo that I found. There we go. I know that was the one I wanted to fix. Hmm. Minor versus major releases. There's so much stuff in here. Um, for us, Gadget, the major version is sort of a Firebot platform version. Um, so we, we will have potentially minor breaking changes in a minor version. Um, but for us, a major version is a major iteration of the Firebot platform itself. So for example, uh, we're getting the groundwork laid for version six, um, version six won't be out for, it may not even be this year that version six is out. Um, just because there's so many fundamental changes that we're going to add into the bot. Um, we're building it on uh, a brand new uh, front end frameworks, um, like just brand new everything. Like we literally started from scratch. Um, 
and we're just we're building everything out for it now um so for us when we update a major like the, the firebot platform itself that's when it goes from like a version five to a version six um yeah it's yeah it's 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 one of those things like it's it's a little difficult um but we it, because firebot has been around for so long and it has gone through so many like major changes um this is you know this is the best way that we have to kind of indicate what those changes are um yeah, historically, first number changes are the the major version number is the foundational change, um, and like I think uh, Dragon wasn't wasn't like the yeah three to four was a complete rewrite four to five was the mixer to Twitch um, move uh, so that's really what that was about um, so everything that's been version five is since Firebot has been a Twitch bot versus a mixer bot. Um, and then version six will be when we lay out all the foundational changes and we start adding things like support for multiple streaming services and things like that. Uh, Lord happy cats. Welcome in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. we we try really hard to stay backwards compatible in the same major versions. Major versions usually involve foundational changes and require an import from old data to new data. Exactly. That's in Biggs should know. Cause he wrote a lot of this import code that we have for, when there was changes from version four to version five migrating from mixer to Twitch. Um, so yeah. For major jump. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yep. So, um, so yeah, so that's version 5.60. Um, again, we know there are a couple of things in here that are some minor inconveniences, but with everything else that we've packed into the release, we have tried to make this one of our most feature packed releases ever. Um, and honestly, like aside from platform changes, um, like full rewrites and converting from Mixer to Twitch, like Biggs, is this, is this the biggest update we've had outside of those instances? Cause I feel like it is. Oh my God. My email is going haywire right now. Firebottle is going through and marking all of the marking all of the stuff that's been released as released in the issue log. We had 51 things that were marked as release pending. Holy cow. Well, there rip my email. That's fantastic. I love that. Uh, let's see. There they all are. 51 issues closed. We are down to 226 open now, which are a lot of feature requests. Um, show hype train level percentage and timer and top bar. So let me see. Ah, I'm going to close it. I'm going to close it. <laughs> Yeah, this is, what is this one, uh, 2087? Um, of, uh, dang it, which one was it? 2087. Yeah. All right, we're going to mark that as a duplicate. Great, great feedback. Just easier to keep up with uh, only one version of it so that we we know. There we go. Perfect.
D5 was not the mixer. It was already out for half a year. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, the new effect system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, let's see how many unread emails I have. I have 55 unread emails. I wonder how many of them are not Firebottle. Five. I have, I have, that's several. That's amazing. Firebottle's just out here, just like, pa 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 pa. Fantastic. Um, oh yeah, I watch, I watch all of this stuff. I mean, you know, being on the dev team, we kind of have to make sure, you know, we, Oh, wow. So much stuff. Ah. Okay. Um, can the Firebot chat see pin messages and watch streaks now? So, um, we do not have APIs from Twitch yet for pinned messages or watch streaks. Um, watch watch streaks are a, they're still a preview feature. Not every stream has them. Not everybody has watch streaks yet. Um, so we don't have an API for that yet. Um, pinned messages, we don't have a an API from Twitch for that either. Uh, pinned messages is one of our most requested items. Um, we just simply do not have any way to get that from Twitch just yet. Uh, I haven't seen it everywhere yet. Um, watch streaks are mostly released to everyone, but there's still a few streams where it, I, they're still not visible. So yeah, it's not fully released yet. That's true also, Perry. Yeah, they're unreliable. Well, that's... Hashtag preview feature things, right? Um, so, yeah, that's something that we just don't have access to yet. Um, some of the things that we are we are looking at uh, trying to get going on fairly soon. Um, we had a request come in for an a a variable to see if a user is banned or a user is timed out. That's for if you want to check if another user is or something like that. Um, you know, so something like that, um, which we're, that will probably be in the next update. Um, we're also doing some updates to the electron framework. I'm just updating it now that we're, we, we made a, we had a major jump in that, um, in version five, five, nine, um, for just a lot of security reasons. And uh, we're now able to keep up. Yeah. 14 to 27, I think is what it was, Dennis. Um, either 14 or 12. Um, actually, I guess I can go look. Let's see. Uh, blame. You can go down to electron. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was that? I just scroll right past it. Yeah, we went from Electron 12 to Electron 27. So <clears throat> a lot of big changes that we had to account for, but also we got the benefit of um, being fairly up to date on like security and things like that in the app um, from a low level. So very, very happy about that. Um, but we're... Uh, we're trying to stay up with that better now and keep things up to date a little better. Um, these viewer milestone from IRC is watch stream. Yeah, there's just the, the thing with it is for like preview features from Twitch as a, just as a rule, we don't take the time to implement preview features because they do change and they have changed and they may go away. So we just, rather than putting in the dev effort for something that 
will change or will go away or break. Like we don't want something to break, right? We we want our biggest thing is always about the streamer experience in Firebot. So we do our best to make sure that everything that we put out is stable, especially from Twitch's side, uh, which is why we waited so long to put out the event sub stuff. Like I said, I've been testing this for over a year now in some form or fashion, but it wasn't ready. It wasn't out there for folks to use uh, in that format yet. And we wanted to make sure that it was solid before we um, pushed it out to everyone. Um, yeah, moments, like moments. Um, moments were a thing that were there. We had, Thankfully, we didn't have an API for it. So, you know, that we didn't end up going to through the trouble to integrate moments um, for that to just go away. But, you know, that's another thing where they changed, they, they, they put out a feature and then after a while they're like, no, no one's using this. So they pulled the plug on it, but, um, but yeah, like it just, it doesn't make sense for us to spend the time because Firebot's a, it's a, it's a, it's a passion project for us all. Like it's a labor of love. Like we, you know, we don't make money from this. This is just something that we spend our free time working on and, um, putting out there for folks. So we want to make sure that when we put something out, you know, if we put out something that's broken, it's going to take us more time to fix it. And it's just, you know, we just, unfortunately don't have unlimited time. If we did, it'd be one thing, but also we still want to make sure that the, the bot that we put out is the best that we can for all of you. That doesn't mean there's not going to be bugs. We know there's going to be bugs. We know there are going to be issues. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that stuff is, um, is actually working correctly as best it can be. Um, so it was a dumpster fire the way they did it. Yeah, that's yeah. I abuse that fact. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> get you, a, get you a chat that will troll you, but in all the all the best ways. Um, but anyway, the next update, the five six one update, we're going to focus on some stuff around uh, making sure our the platform stays up to date. Um, I know there's going to be some changes to how we process variables under the hood, so there might be some changes that you see. There might not be. It really just depends on. Um, you know, what kind of advanced usage you're using for variables. Um, and something that I want to look at at some point, and I don't know if it will be in the next version or not. But um, I would like to add a UI on the channel rewards page to show the redemption queue for all of your Firebot managed channel rewards so that you could go in and mark them as either um, approved or denied. Um, so this is something that I would like to work on pretty soon. I don't know what version it will be in, um, but that's this is kind of on my watch list right now. Um, let's see, what else do I have that's assigned to me? I think that's that's all I've got right now. Um, oh, that's just the reward. Um, do want to do that? Um, something that eventually we will look into. We just don't have the, the proper data from Twitch right now. Uh, just like we have the first time chatter, which we actually get correct data from Twitch on that, which thankfully I'm, I'm very happy about. Um, there are also the highlights for returning chatters so if it's a new person who has come back to your channel in the last like 30 days i think it is um and then the tags for people who raid um um that stuff we don't have the proper data for that yet we have a lot of the infrastructure in place on our side uh as far as displaying it we just simply don't have um we don't have the correct data from Twitch yet. As soon as we have that, then I would like for us to put that in as well. So we can have highlights for and events for like a returning chatter. So if you have like a returning person who's like, you know, still fairly new, not a first timer, but like it's their second time in the stream. It's like, Hey, welcome back. Glad to see you again. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, there's, 
There's a couple of other things I want to look at. Um, we're we're looking at um, a lot of stuff, but it's just we're finally getting back to the point to where we have a little bit more time to work on things than we did over the last year. So we're trying to get like a lot of the most requested stuff and admittedly a lot of the low hanging fruit too, just stuff that we could quickly say, Hey, you know what? This is something that folks have been struggling with. Let's get this fixed and get it out. So it's no longer a pain point. Um, like things like link highlighting and chat, like, is it a showstopper? No. Is it annoying? Yeah. Like you want links. If someone puts a link in your chat, you want to be able to click the link to open it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, Perry. Yeah. No, nobody. Twitch is like, Oh, nobody used moments. Didn't they though? Cause I had all kinds of moment badges, but again, you know, that's thankfully one of those things that we didn't have anything built around. Um, so um yeah that's 560 that's some of the that's also some of the stuff that we have that we're looking into uh coming up soon uh, again we are still working on little by little on the foundation of version six um no time frame on that yet it is still at minimum many 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 months away but uh we've got a lot of great stuff that are um that are still in the works anyway uh so yeah. Uh, what other questions do you all have? Um, put them in chat because the ads are starting. Uh -huh. While ads are running, I'm going to take a breather. Do, 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 do. Oh, no hydrate regime. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm drinking. Hmm. Liz, you're finally done setting up the spreadsheet to research departmental scholarships after two days. Good gravy. Loving the firebot. Managed to convince a few people to make change. Prepared to mix it up. Excited to see what's come. And yeah, I'll, we'll go over, we'll go over that in a second. Oh my God, Bean just sent me a picture of the loaf. This is my, this is our kitty. That's Loaf in her new little bed that she got for Christmas. I'll leave Loaf on the screen for a second. Ah, uh, okay. This is our loaf. She's a loaf. She's a kitten. That's our sweet baby. She's the best one. Yeah, she's the best kitten's cat. She's very snuggly, very sweet. Ah, uh, anyway. Um, <sighs> so, yeah, that's, that's what we've got. Um... I'm, again, I'm just, we're all very, very super proud of this release because um, we know this was a big one. This was one that folks were asking a lot about. And um, we, uh, yeah. We really like, we really like this a lot. Um, we're proud of this one. I mean, we're, we're proud of all of our releases, but this one was a, a particularly special one to all of us. So, um, yeah. 
Yay! Yes. Exactly that. Yay. Okay. Um... Do y'all want to add new features? Do you want to add new variables? Now that we're here and we can do it now. Oh, we got five, six. This. Are we are we really gonna do this? this? I think we we might have a patch already. I think we might have a patch already. I'm waiting to see. Cool. All right, well, I'm I'm waiting on feedback. We may actually have a patch for five sixty already, just for Max though. Um, Max were having an issue where it wouldn't get past the splash screen. It was working in dev, but it didn't work with the actual final build. So, um, needs to be hot fix always, always. It's been out for what two? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go look. Huh. Almost two hours, not quite two hours. Yeah, the entirety of Mac OS is, was Borkin. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Let's see, what was the fix? Did it? Did it? Oh, was it the? It was the the menu icon path. Oh, I see. Let me see what we ended up having to do here. I know we... Oh, yeah, because we added the... Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, that makes sense. Doesn't fit, wait, it doesn't fix icons? No longer blocks opening. Uh, oh, hmm. Because of the try catch, yeah. What the hell? It's really weird. Do icons still appear on? Let's try the nightly. Cause you got, there's a nightly for it now, right? And it'll work better since we use it for icons elsewhere without issue. Yeah, I was, I figured we needed path resolved in there cause it probably like doesn't like when there's not a, a fully qualified path. Uh, let's go grab the nightly. See how nightly works on. Doesn't like it either way. What the hell? It's it's so annoying that it worked in dev but not in the build. The 
is one of the ones where I have to double or I have to click on it twice. And I'll just go to the downloads folder. Downloads and the nightly. Put it in the sandbox, see what happens. Pulling directly from the repo folder, things get weird in the bundled app ASAR. Hmm. Okay, it's fine still on Windows on the nightly. So I think that's okay. Polymath, welcome in. Hope you're doing well today. Okay, well, in that case, are we like. Um, let's see. Okay, that works. Um, all right, so that's fine. Izzy, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. We resolve since it didn't change anything. So we try catch change just to get Mac Opus running again. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm. Uh, that's fine. Uh, okay, so you've got revert to resolve since it didn't change anything. Uh, Okay. Is it a chirp a chirp? Chirp chirp, you wanna come say hi? No, she's shy. The kitty came to say hi. Alright, let's go ahead and roll f uh five sixty dot one. Um V five. It was a loaf. Yeah. Okay. Uh PR five dot sixty dot one Mac OS launch fix. Um create PR. Uh yeah, there was an there was an issue on Mac OS that worked in dev, but for some reason it's not working in the production build. One dot one dot two dot one dot five dot one dot six. Yeah, that's right. Sounds like coding life. Oh yeah. The way it is. Hello. Hello. Everybody say hello to Loaf. Hi Loaf. Okay, we'll go ahead and merge that. And let that run. Oh, that's a loaf. That's a loaf. She's a sweet girl. She's the very sweetest kitty in the world. Come here. What you doing? Hello? Hey. Good? Okay. Whoosh. There she goes. Looks like an SMP. Oh, my God. It kind of does look. I'm like, you know what, Gadget? Like, you put that, and I'm like... That looks weird, but familiar for some reason. It does look like an oid. That's funny. I God, I haven't looked at oids in ages.
Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, let's go back up. And check our actions, and we'll let that do its thing. Okay. We'll let that run for a minute. <clears throat> We're probably working too much with network equipment. Yeah, probably. Probably. Ah. Uh. Okay, so we got the build running. We'll get that out in just a minute. Um, uh, I love that we already have a... Like, I love that we already have a hotfix out. In fairness... Like two versions ago, we didn't have a Mac build. So, date user DB interactions work based on user ID were applicable. Okay, Dennis, let me just refactor all of how we handle users. Let me refactor the entire user system, which is a fundamental part of how Firebot works. It's on my list. Is it going to happen soon? No. No, but it's going to happen at some point. God damn it, Tom. User DB is version nine. Yeah, yeah. No more user DBs. Uh, doop, doop. Uh, let's see. Let me go and just. Good gravy. There are so many things. I'm just going to delete my emails, like all 5,000 of my emails that I got. And, I mean, it's like 55, but still. I still blame Firebottle. It's all his fault. Going through and closing stuff. Mm, we love that for us, though. Oh, do we love that for us. Love being able to close out bugs is fixed. Love being able to close out features as released. I got the email with the release on it. I might save that one. That one's kind of special. That is a big email. That is not a small email. Ah. I know that's in 30 minutes. Yeah. Just half an hour from now. Yeah, it's fine. Before my before I eat dinner, it'll be fine. It'll be done. No, it will not be done. Um, I'm gonna attempt to create basic Linux install instructions. Ooh, all right. Let me know, Dennis. Let me know when you uh when you need someone to go through and uh and edit it, unpack, run. <laughs> well done, Perry. Well done. See, I'm I am not buying a Mac Mini. Get out of here with that nonsense. Do, do, do. What's this? Mm, food emails. I love food emails. Those are great. All right. The Linux build is done. The Mac build is just uploading now. The PC build is finishing its build. I am not buying a Mac Mini. That's right. You better believe it. I'm buying a Mac Mini. I will. You know what I do? I would like at some point, though. Uh, one of these things. Come on, open it up. Yeah. The Windows Dev Kit, the ARM-based little device. I'd love one of these things. They're just so neat looking. Just kind of like slide it under one of the monitors. Instructions on, I'm available. Oh, nice, nice. The Windows, yes, it's it's the it's uh, excuse you, Biggs. It's the Windows Mini, okay? It's the Windows Dev Kit. Show some respect. Does it run Linux? It might. It might. I mean, it's ARM based, so 
it probably doesn't have all the TPM stuff on it like you do on x86 machines. Chris Pro X first gen, pretty cheap now. You probably can, Gadget, you probably can. There it is. There's all the there's all the Linux people. Can it run Doom? Yes, it runs Windows. Oh, it says install WSL and use Linux. I mean it works, doesn't it? WSL is great and it has graphical hooks, so most of what you can do on just a a plain old Linux box you can do now. So there you go. Does it have a thirty no, it doesn't have a thirty ninety. Great box to put on the back of the TV. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, this would make a great set-top box, except it's $600. And at that point, if I'm going to buy a $600 machine to just connect to a TV, I can just buy another Xbox, but I already have one. WSL get graphic hooks? Oh. Uh, do 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 WSLG, enabling the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux to include support for Wayland and X server related scenarios. Um, run Linux GUI apps with WSL. WSL now supports running Linux GUI applications, X11 and Wayland, on Windows in a fully integrated desktop environment. You can now integrate both Windows and Linux applications into your workflow for a seamless desktop experience. There's console, there is, yep, yep. Look at that. And this is this is a Windows PC, but it's running WSL and it's running, there's Nautilus running, there's Firefox for Linux running, Gedit and Xcalc, all running on, uh, all running on Windows from WSL. No, Windows Arm is a lot better now. Windows Arm is a ton better now. Um, Windows Arm is pretty much feature parity with uh, X64, and they even have a compatibility layer. Um, so the compatibility layer that they have on X64 to run X86 stuff, um, like classic 32-bit stuff, the Windows on Windows system, they have a Windows on Windows system for ARM now that runs x64 stuff. So like full Visual Studio, you can install on the ARM PCs now. Um, so, yeah. QEMU, oh man, QEMU, there's something I haven't looked in there in a while. You need to install Windows and Bootcamp on a Mac and run WCL, then you'd have Linux in your Windows and your Mac. Ugh. Bix, that's, Bix, that's, that's gross. <laughs> like two RPIs, five years. Oh God, that's, that's true. Yeah, I, I still have, I have like an old Pi 2 right here. Um, that has like the old, like Windows 10 IoT core on it and. Um, but yeah, I got a, I got a Pi 2 here. Just, I don't know what to do with it. Cause I don't know. I just don't know. This folks not bothering to make any arm builds. There's an edge app and that runs great. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's the thing. Like I, does, okay. Gadget does. I know kitty. Um, does electron build for arm now? Because I know Chrome, Chrome didn't have native ARM builds for Pete for Windows until my buddy Jeremy built, made the, like, fix the builds for Chrome so that Chromium would actually build, like, on ARM. He's the one that, he's the one that actually made that work, which is wild. It works, but it's just slow. Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine so. Let's see what we got here. Windows on ARM, if you're at Windows 6. Oh, oh. I didn't, I didn't realize it's been around that long. Electron 6? Huh. That's weird, man. Just Des being lazy slash not caring. Well, it's also market share too, right? Like, 
how many people are using windows on arm like we're on elect we're on izzy we're on 20 well, 28 now yeah 28.1.1 is the latest stable 29s in pre-release and 30s in nightly um firebot specifically is on 27 we're about to bump up to 28 um and then we're going to start keeping a regular cadence of updating um electron versions in firebot like now that we're really close to um uh, we're really close to latest we got here features fixes changes to chromium ah, neat I'm sorry, so you'll mess around with this when you need to mess with Firebot. That's fair. That's fair. I so Izzy, I've been like my primary job for the last uh decade has been dev. Before the decade before that was sysop, was IT. Um sysadmin, net admin, stuff like that. Fix the voice mod things. Oh god, the voice mod things. Oh, voice mod. Voice mod, why? Fallout 3 from GOG simply won't launch at all for some reason. Well, Fallout 3 has problems on PC, on x64, so. Their actions are done? Perfect. All right, let's go. Uh... Thank you, Dennis. Okay, releases. Uh... Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Do do do. Um, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that because that's, I'm not putting the rest of the 560 below that. No, Biggs, don't make me do it. Biggs, don't make me do it. There's, there's so many notes. There's a million lines of notes. I'm going to do it now, though. Heck, heck you, Biggs, I'm doing it. All right, let's see. All right, we'll put that as the minor. Did it actually work? No, no, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, big shout to uh, to Dennis and Biggs for tracking that down and getting a fix in so quickly so that it actually works. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Uh, okay. We're good. We're good. Yes. Preview. All right. I know, Biggs. I know. I just, it's just the, the longest release notes ever. Um, all right. 5.60 on update notes. Did I write, just write patch notes? I'm going to write patch notes. Patch notes. We're putting patch notes. Danger Duff, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. We are already patching the release that came out today. We had a Mac OS X issue or Mac OS issue. Look. All the releases for every release ever, just in case. That's true. Yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick. BRB pay <laughs> copying every release note ever. Um uh, publish. Hot fix notes? Okay, done. Done. We're they're they're gonna be hot fix notes now. Hot fix notes. No cold fixes around here. Only the hottest of fixes. Served fresh. Right out of the oven. Just like grandma used to compile. Okay, there we go. Just blame Apple for that hot <laughs> joke. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> uh it's all Steve's fault. Everything is Steve's fault? Okay. We'll blame we'll blame Steve. He's not here to defend himself. He's not anywhere to defend himself. 
Okay. 560.1 is out. Fix an issue where Mac OS builds wouldn't open the main Firebot window. Perfect. That's mm, Biggs, you're not wrong, buddy. You're not wrong. But just just add the fire emoji, just like that's great. Um all right, well that's that. So now that that's done. Okay, are we done yet? Are we are we done hot fixing this thing? Is Fire Bottle still out here closing stuff? Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to keep that email too. All right, that's that. Okay, I think uh, I think we're solid here. Add an animated fire emoji that spans the whole screen when an update is available. <laughs> Done, perfect, nailed it. Uh, already what? Yeah, yeah. Fire bottles just going through and just rapid fire on stuff in the backlog. Okay. All right. Mac builds are finished or fixed. That's good. The patch is out. And now let me go and. No, not Discord. That's not the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted. Let's load this one. Let's see. Um, I love, I'm, I'm absolutely going to go. Make sure we. Okay, go and get ready to post it in the Discord. Um, the release fix an issue. Okay, yep, yep, yep. That looks good. Let's change the URL here. This. Okay, five dot sixty dot one. That links to the five dot sixty dot one release. Yeah, please view the full release notes. Um, uh, yeah, okay. And, you know. Okay. There we go. Done. All right. Done with that. We've added that in. That's all fixed. All right. Sweet. I think we did it. We did great. We did a lot of great stuff. This has been fantastic. I love it. I'm a big fan. GG easy. Try the betas. Extinguish fires five minutes after release. That's true. Um, so let's and let's talk about that for a second. So we are we've had betas in the past. This has been one of the biggest betas that we've had in a while. Uh, Kakan, thank you. Welcome in. Um, we've uh, we ran this beta uh, for a couple weeks, and we had ended up having three versions of the beta. Um, so we're, we're going to run betas in the future for big stuff. 
Um, and again, this is one of those ones that we wanted to get right. So we wanted to spend as much time letting this sort of, um, letting the code bake, so to speak, as much as possible. <clears throat> um, so we also do have nightly builds. Now, here's the thing about the nightly builds, okay? The nightly builds may be unstable, um, a little more so than the betas, but they will have all of the fixes or all the, the, the code changes that we have in our V5 branch. Anything that's in V5 that hasn't been uh, pushed over to the master branch yet. Um, the nightlies are available here and I can post a link in the chat. Almost like the nightly builds are a point in time of code for that day. Almost, almost. Um, so this is where our nightly builds live. If you go to releases, you can install a nightly build. Um, the nightlies will not update to the next nightly. Uh, once you're on a nightly, you are on that build until you get to um, the next full release, okay? So in this case, uh, if you install a nightly, you're on whatever one you install until you either install a newer nightly or until we release like 5.60.2 or 5.61.0. <clears throat> then at that point, um, uh, a stable release will update your nightly. Um, other than that, we don't update uh, the nightlies. Uh, we don't update the betas. Um, that's that's really like a one it's about the infrastructure because we would have to put in a lot of checking to see well am i on like a nightly or a beta am i on blah 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 and two um because for a lot of this we want to test out a specific version and make sure that version is good and then also make sure that whatever update we're going to fixes the things from like the first beta or the previous nightly or whatever it may be um, so if you do want to try out the latest and greatest that's in a, uh, in Firebot, the stuff that hasn't been released yet, nightlies are a great way to do that. But again, remember these may have things that are unstable in them. Okay. So if things break, that's just part of the, that's the risk you take running a nightly. Um, but when we do have betas, we will announce it in the discord. Um, again, if you go to firebot.app, there's a link up in the top right to join our Discord, okay? Um, that's the best place for announcements about um, version updates, uh, things that we have going on in the community, or if we're looking for beta testers for th something. If you have questions about how to use Firebot, or if you're having an issue with something that you think is uh, broken that you need help with, that's the place for it. That is the absolute best place for it, is posting it in the Discord, okay? We have channels for all of that stuff set up. Um, we have a channel map channel that's at the top um, uh, that will kind of show you where everything is. Um, so in the Discord, go check it out. Um, so yeah. Jar, how's it going? Reject, reject. You missed all the fun, buddy. It's all done. We've already patched it. And we've we've already we've already released it and patched it. It's done. Reject missed all the fun. Reject's on our our core team. He's uh, he's he's he keeps me in line most of the time. Ban this man immediately. There's no way it's up to any good. <laughs> Banned. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna recommend channels. I clicked in. I'm curious about Firebot. Uh, so. Firebot, uh, just a brief overview, uh, Firebot is a Twitch chatbot that you run on your local computer. Um, it's got a fully fledged out effect system. It's got triggers for things like commands, events. Um, you can have set things set up on timers. You can manage channel reward, channel point rewards in it. Um, you can set up hotkeys. There's, there's, a, there's so many things that Firebot can do. Um, but... There you go. Um, Reject, don't you dare. You get out of the cookie jar right now. You get out of that cookie jar. Get out of there. 
and pull up dev environments, fix the user data path and include the environment so you don't have a problem. So Izzy, um, I can absolutely, I can, I, I absolutely understand doing that. Um, I don't because one, I live dangerously and two, I make sure to keep my backups. Um, but yeah, if you're going to use a pre pre-release version, like a nightly or a beta, make sure you back up firebot by default backs up every day. Go to settings, go down to backups. When Firebot closes, it runs a backup. Once a day, it runs a backup. Okay? You can have it run a backup manually when you click the backup now button. You can see your man you can manage your backups from here. You can lock a uh, a backup in time. You can click and have it prevent auto deletion. So when I come back here, this one stays. We don't automatically delete this. Okay? Um, so make sure you keep your backups, make sure you have good backups when you're, um, using pre-release version. I mean, in general, keep them and maintain them, but especially when using pre-release versions of Firebot. Hmm. And maybe wait until there's a stable release before upgrading from 5.55. Uh, we have, we have several stable, Fritz, we have several stable releases. We're on, we're on 5.60.1, buddy. A backup in time is a great band name. I like that. That's good. That's good. Not allowing Firebot to monitor multiple chat rooms from multi-streamers. Um, we'll come back to that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, what Reject said. Um, and I can actually go to, let's go to our issues. I know YouTube is on here. Copy the link. It has a script that shares the solution. Bet he does. Uh, but yeah, Firebot. Um, it's yeah. We'll 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 talk more about that in a second when the ads are over. Mm, plan. It's a blob. V six is a blob. Just a big old like yellow blob of stuff of goo. Well. I mean, you don't have to be a hardcore streamer to be on the latest stuff. It's, um, you know, just, I'd say grab the latest and read the release notes. Read the release notes. V6 is like fusion generators, always three years away. Ah, that's funny. That's funny. 1980 fixed here. Uh, what's 1980? Reward. Uh, no, that is not. Nope. I love you too, Fritz. I love you, buddy. Uh, no, Dennis, that is. That's why I put the note in two weeks ago. Um, if it was fixed, I would have marked that one. Fritz, thanks for the look, buddy. Um, but yes, so version six. Still in the early planning stages, still trying to lay some of the foundation for it. The plan um, is to allow multiple streaming services to hook into Firebot. Um, Twitch will be one that we build. We will also attempt to build YouTube as well. Um, anything beyond that really is going to be sort of a community project. Like if someone would like to build their own plugin for a a streaming service, whether it's like Trovo or uh, I know I'm probably going to end up building one for live space um, or things like that. Um, so once, you know, one of those actually, you know, once we have that infrastructure in place and we can add in one of those additional services, 
that's when we'll we'll do that kind of thing but um it's just you know we we've got to get the foundation for v6 kind of laid first and again firebot it's a it's a passion project it's something that we all do in our spare time so we don't you know we all have jobs and lives and stuff like that that we that have to come first um that's big reason why um you know we didn't have a lot of huge updates over the last several months um just we had a lot of stuff that we had to do um so um now that we're things are starting to to settle down for a lot of us uh, we're able to get back into the swing of it a little bit so um we're getting back to work on it but it's just going to take it's going to take time by the power of open source add-ons, it'll basically be only limited by how crappy the APIs of the streaming services are. Yes, that's correct. Correct. And that's why I said we will attempt to build a YouTube integration. Um, but don't know how well that's going to work because YouTube's API for the live streaming stuff, admittedly, is not ideal. Um, like As much as we all like to give Twitch a hard time about Twitch being twitchy, their APIs are pretty all right. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's some weird things that we have to kind of work around sometimes, but for the most part, Twitch is fairly easy to work with from an API standpoint. Um, maybe arena. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff that we're not going to provide inbox. I think the only one that we will provide inbox is probably Twitch maybe youtube if it goes well but the rest of that will be stuff that will be plugins that will be available um that's the other thing that we want to kind of do in uh it is definitely an api of all time but at least it's an api yeah yeah that's true they got like five different apis yeah no shit no shit um but yeah um, again, uh, I'm, I'm going to be probably building one for, uh, the live space service. Um, and that won't be like an official one that we'll include. Um, probably that'll be just be one on the side. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> but the idea is for version six, our, our kind of the big vision is Firebot will become just fully a platform, um, and then other things will will hook into it. Um, and again, Twitch is going to be like a major one because that's you know that's what we do now is Twitch, um, and we have a lot of that kind of um, groundwork in place to be able to move a lot of that functionality over once V6 is in a place where we can do that. Um, but f as far as other services are concerned, we will have the ability for plugins to say, all right, I want to, you know, this is a streaming service that provides chat and this is how you do a chat message in this service. This is how you do like a DM in this service. This is how you do, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, these are the, these are the kind of, you know, actions and, and variables and events that this service provides stuff like that. Twitch API. It's an API. Twitch API. Maybe more than one API. Please ask your doctor. Twitch API vendor. Twitch API is right for you. Don't Twitch API and drive. Do not try to use Twitch API on YouTube. <laughs> if YouTube ever gets us acting. Okay. Yeah. Jovial. Sure. That's. Yep. Yeah, that's. That's a, that's a lot of ifs and coulds. That's a lot of ifs and coulds. If you know. Hmm. It's okay. Uh, much like Twitch, YouTube is just a, they're a tiny little startup with not a lot of resources. So we'll see what happens. Let's get you back to good grip. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that's what we're, that's what we want to do. Um, that's the big picture stuff. And then, like I said, for version 5.61, uh, we want to um, do some focus on sort of the variable system to make variables, at least for a, a development standpoint, a little more flexible um, and resilient to change and stuff like that. Um, we want to do things where um, one of the things that I, I would like to see is we update um, uh, 
some of our like default variables, things like the donation from and donation amount. We updated those in this version to support the new Twitch charity campaigns. I would like to see us be able to dynamically hook into that. So if someone has a plugin that also wants to use that, then they can provide the event data. And if the event data contains like a standard field name, like the donation from, then we can provide that for that event as well. Um, so that's kind of the, the stuff that we've been kind of going back and forth on how we want to try to do some of that. Um, but you know, it's just, it's a process. And again, there's a small team of like a small core team of us who are, uh, trying to do what we can in our spare time. Um, we have some really great community experts that we, uh, lean heavily on to help out the user base when we're not able to, or we're not around, um, or when we're in the middle of trying to crank out a release like this. Um, so folks like Dennis and CKY, um, who have been, uh, really, really helpful the last year or so, just, you know, keeping things running smoothly in the discord for us. And, um, you know, folks like dragon slayer, he's been, you know, just all kinds of helpful keeping the moderation stuff. Yeah. Huge shout out to those two. Like Dennis and CKY have been like killing it in the discord and we really, really appreciate them, uh, helping out folks when, when stuff comes up. Um, you didn't tap into the regular donation related variables. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dennis. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, buddy. We, we, we feel that. I feel that. Izzy has also been killing your code the second you looked at it. Well, that's in fairness. In fairness, Izzy, we keep CK around specifically to break things. If CKY isn't breaking something, then he's probably in the corner eating crayons as he does. Or he's here putting in, you know, feature requests. <laughs> then he isn't CKY. That's right. We keep around to keep us all in check. That's true. We do. We do. We do. Um, so let's see what we got. Fire bottles closing more things in the, in, yeah. How many, how many issues are we down to now? We're down to 214. Um, East QA. Yeah, that's right. We keep Firebot around. I close the issues. <laughs> he'll, I, I love it because Firebottle, he'll show up and he'll just be like, hey man, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here for a good time now. <laughs> he's like, he's like, y'all have this. Just take care of it. <laughs> He's a really cool dude. Um, but yep, we're, we're very, very proud of our little bot and all of the things that it can do and the community that we've built around it. Um, and I gotta tell you, um, I mean, not just the, the bot itself, but this community, the team itself. It's, uh, it's been really special to me and I'm very, very proud to be a part of this. Um, I was, I was looking for an open source project for quite some time that I could kind of latch on to and feel like I could do something substantial with and, and make an impact with. And, uh, my best friend, Tom, he told me about Firebot a couple of years ago and I pulled it and I'm like, yep, this is it. This is the one. This is the one quantitative annihilation of your morale uh, only on Tuesdays. Yeah. It's Friday. Is he? It's fine. You're, you're safe today. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm yeah. And I'm married. Right. Fi f f Firebot made my marriage happen. No, it didn't, but still, that's funny. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that's about it. So let's go implement a feature. Now that, now that we fixed the Mac issue, let's go add a new feature. Um, all right, I got to sync down my changes. 
Let's see here. Where are we? The back end, the variables, the built in. And we're gonna make a we're gonna make new stuff. New feature. Update to version 28. Alright. Okay. Let's do that real quick while we're here. 28.1.1. You know what? We're just going to... Oh, I can close this now for now. Okay. Is it just Electron? It's just Electron, right? Yeah, it's just Electron. Electron at latest. What? How dare you? Oh, is it maybe? Oh, it's because I'm it's because I'm running right now. Let me close the bot. Close fire bot. Computer say no. Uh, okay. Uh, let's make sure the actual process is closed fully. Yeah, no electrons running. All right, cool. Twenty eight dot one dot one. Perfect. <laughs> oh, is my bot is it the bots down? <laughs> Bump bump. Uh all right, let's let's see what happens. Ooh, I can pull the latest changes on Master Branch now, too. Pull 224 commits into Branch Master. Okay. Why is custom script types not in dev dependencies? Um, because we actually run it. We actually use it for at runtime. And also it's going to go away anyway. Custom script types are eventually going to go away in favor of actually exporting them from the bot itself or from the, the main code itself. That's part of the, that's, that's a big reason why we've been bringing types in here, Dennis. Um, so that we can actually have all of this stuff in here and utilize it inside of Firebot. Now that we have TypeScript support, uh, thank you, reject and bigs. And, um, then eventually just re-export this out as our um, custom script types, the stuff that's relevant anyway. <clears throat> well, the bot ran. I mean, it ran. Hey, look, my overlay is connected. Look at that. Um, okay, look at that. Hey, it works. So uh, do I just do I just do I just commit this now? Um, what does Electron twenty eight do more of than twenty seven? Uh, so Electron cad release cadences. Electron does major changes to keep up with both Chrome and Node. Okay. Um, so. Electron will update its major version every two Chrome updates. So Chrome releases every four weeks, uh, which means every eight weeks we get a new major version of Electron. So like you can see here, um, Electron 26 is Chrome 116, Electron 27 is Chrome 118, Electron 28 is 120. Um, and then the pre-release stuff, they're working on that, but that this will eventually change because that's an alpha that will change up to the, you know, the later versions. Um, <clears throat> 
So then also they the major versions will also change with like the node like the latest like minor revision to the the latest node long-term service version. So the latest long-term servicing version of Node.js is version 18. So 26 has 18.16, 27 has 18.17, 28 has 18.18. .18. Um, 28 adds Let's see. Where's Let's go, let's go back to, let's go all releases. Uh, filter by major release, 28. Next, so 28. Uh, so stack upgrades, Chrome 120, uh, node 18.18, .18, and then V8.12 is still there. Um, there's some, a few breaking changes, but nothing that affects us. Um, and this is added uh, ECMAScript module support, ESM modules, so you can do like in JavaScript natively, you can do the imports now, but we're using TypeScript, so we're already using import statements anyway. Um, nearly process API supports this ESM entry point, so there's just, really that's the biggest thing, but also, um, I mean, there's a whole host of bug fixes um, that are, you know, we'll, we'll get as part of this, but also, also, um, it's the biggest thing is like updating the, the Chrome and the node stack to get new features and security updates. <gasps> Dommy, thank you, buddy. Um, so yeah, so that'll do that. Uh, all right, then we'll need to go. We got that. Let's go down here and do. Uh, what are we? Eighteen dot eighteen dot. Okay. Uh, let's also go to. Let's we'll see what that is. Six hours at zero day from between Christmas and New Year's. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, this is part of the reason why we spent a lot of effort in 5.59 getting Electron updated from like 12 to 27 so that changes like this are trivial. Because there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of lift and shift that uh, Reject had to do to get Electron from 12 to 27. I mean, it's 15 major versions and a lot of stuff changed in Electron in that time. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. What do we got? Um, previous releases. Okay. Node. 10.2.3. Oh, 10.2.4 works. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can leave that. <clears throat> 15, 12 to 15 to 26 to 27. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah, the one big versus small and often. Exactly. And now, and that's, that's a lot of the stuff that we did even in the 560 release. Like, with all of the, the visible changes and all of the features and like fixes and improvements and everything, there was still a ton of other stuff that we did under the hood that's just code. That's just like that stuff that like most folks won't care about. It's just the stuff that we work on that we see that helps us maintain a lot of this stuff. So, so we use Rails 7 because it's still supported versus we're running into from BSD head. Oh God. Oh, oh, I w I used to be certified in Red Hat. Actually, I'm... that's my official Red Hat fedora. Like, like it's, it's, I can't, you can't really see it from here, but it's got, it's upside down, but it's got the, uh, the Red Hat name stamped in the, uh, the inner band. That's my official Red Hat fedora. Uh, yeah, TTS is out of our hands, unfortunately. That is, 
that's that is stuff between like <laughs> that is a gripe between the browser platform and the operating system that we have no controller visibility into which sucks and i hate it Hello. oh no liz that's just my uh it's just my it's just my fedora i'm not gonna go like around the world and steal major landmarks it's fine put it on bsd development head build oh my god <laughs> my user <laughs> Okay, um, well, that's the Electron 28 lift. So, yeah, are we good? Reject that work for you, buddy. Major landmarks aren't worth what they used to be. Yeah, yeah, in this economy. <laughs> Big beard, red fedora, clean up for development. Can I offer you a job in Germany? I mean, listen, I Germany would be nice. I do love the food. I kick back some. Everybody else is going to Germany to drink beer. I'm going back to drink spritzy. Ah. Uh, <sighs> yeah, all right. Well, I think that's. I mean, that's plenty. Yes. Yes. Okay, you have to understand. I'm from Southeast Georgia in the States, okay? In Georgia, uh, reject just the, just go ahead and committing the electron change and you, you good with that? Just chore electron 28.1.1? Okay. Uh, commit and we're still on V5, yeah. Commit and push. Um, so in Coca-Cola comes from the great state of Georgia. It's based in Atlanta, the capital. Um, so we don't have like the real orange juice based Fanta. We have we have the good old Americanized version. Um we have, ours is all natural and artificial flavorings and corn syrup. It's orange drink based, yes. It's it's our delicious uh, carbonated orange drink. Mm. And it's delicious, honestly. Yes, we have the radioactive orange drink. It's corn syrup and color, that's right. Corn syrup and dyes. Uh, keeps the aliens away, that's true. That's true. Uh, okay, so electrons up. Um, TypeScript. What version of TypeScript is latest? I can never remember whether it's .org or lang.org. Um, 5.3. Oh, God. Let's go see what... All right, we're on 4.7.2 now. All right. 4.8. Um... Correctness and consistency improvements under strict null checks. Unions. Okay. Unknown is close in spirit to the union type. That or null or undefined because it's sex null and undefined in any other types. Now recognizes this and allows assignments from unknown to... Oh! That's nice. I like that. Just hoist it and see if things break. Okay. Um. Where's my... No, not Git lens. I don't want the Git lens one. Do, 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 do. Type script. Uh, okay. Precompiler doesn't break a compilation. It's good. That's true. That's a good point. So don't use coal tar anymore. Well, uh, well, that we know of. Listen, the Coca-Cola recipe is still secret. We don't know. We don't know. All right. Uh, I'm just going to stop Firebot. I don't need to do anything clean. Mine. I live dangerously. Missed the TS5 a couple weeks ago, but reverted it not to rock the boat. 
What are the ton of issues, if any? Damn it, pigs. That's spoilers. I haven't seen this season of TypeScript on, on Fireby yet. Uh, what was the issue with custom script stop again? Um, we don't have it implemented. Hey, it ran. It, <laughs> it compiled. <laughs> uh. We have parameters updated, implemented. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, this works. TypeScript season five, the decorating, <laughs> the decorating. I love that. Uh, um, okay, that works. So, sure. TypeScript five dot three dot three, bigs. Reject. You lads good with that? What else did they change in five? Let's see. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, uh, I I'm looking forward to using decorators, honestly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in your implicit returns for undefined returning functions. Ah, uh, I see. Using declarations. Uh, increase a temporary file. Okay. You need to perform an early exit. Okay. Huh. Oh, symbol dot dispose. Oh. oh, I like that. External decorator is true, but cool. It's finally more official. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know there's going to be a symbol dot dispose. Ooh, I like that. Import attributes with type. Oh, look at look at that! Look at that! Wow! Wow! Okay, ship it. Um, what version of grunt stuff are we on? Should we? I I dare. Wow! I dare not touch the grunt stuff because it works, and I don't want to break it. Also, I don't know that we're using copy files anywhere. No, we are not using copy files anywhere. Let's take out copy files and see what happens. Can we move to Electron Builder instead of Grunt? Uh, listen. Both of you, both of you, both of you are going to have to talk fucking reject about that. That is his little red wagon. I ain't touching it. I ain't getting, uh-uh. Uh-uh, he, he will beat me with a mop handle or something. A mop handle? Violence, I approve. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see. Install, save dev, copy files. Let's see what happens. Bloop. All right, we don't need that. I don't think we need that. <gasps> Sushi? Oh my god, Lissa! Lissa, my raid alerts are down because I turned my bot off because I'm building stuff. Holy bejeebus. Hi, Lissa. I, there's Sushi and Lissa and True and Pearly and Industry. 
hot. We brought manatees today. I love manatees. And I love you. All right, I got I to gotta run the bot now. I got to start the bot back up so I can do the raid alert. And I got to do it. It's just, it's, it's got to it's gotta happen now. And bot is asleep for bot surgery. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, welcome in, everyone. Hi, Wally. Um, wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Uh, Lissa, thank you for the raid. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get this going here in a second. That work? Yeah, that worked. I don't think we need copy files anymore either. Uh, is it, oh, it's loading on the other screen. Uh, but thank y'all. Yet, yeah, uh, my affiliate anniversary is this weekend. Uh, I'm celebrating stream anniversary tomorrow, actually, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, and I'm going for 12 hours. I'm going to do a Lego set. I got a Lego Minecraft set for Christmas, and I might try to learn to crochet, and I'll probably be playing some games, and I'm probably going to be working on Firebot a little bit here and there. And I'm keep, I keep getting emails from Firebottle doing stuff. Uh, well, this this built and ran, so uh, let's go simulate an event. Let's see, how many did we had? Did you have? Was it thirty eight? Okay, we're doing it. Everyone, please control yourselves. This is a mature party. And no, I love it. I love it. Perfect. And we got the shout out and everything. Um, where's the fancy shout out? I gotta do the fancy shout out. And then boom. And look at that. There's my event that fired because I sent out a shout out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God, the disco ball. I love the disco ball so much. It's so good. Uh, well, welcome in Raiders. Um, if you spent any time in Lissa's chat, you know me. I'm Zunderscore. Uh, I'm a variety streamer, and today we are talking all about Firebot and the brand new release that we just put out, 5.60. Um, we've already patched it and everything because we had a, we had an issue with the Mac builds. Um, so you're gonna up okay? Reject's gonna update expressionish. Nice, nice, nice. Um, but as far as games go, um, I like a lot of platformers, Metroidvanias, strategy games. Um, uh, what else do I like? RPGs, just all kinds of stuff. Um, but welcome. I'm glad y'all are here. It is wonderful to see all of you, especially all the friendos that I know from Lissa's uh, community. So hello, hello. Also, Two-Ton Waffle, good to see you. Welcome in. Um... So yeah. All right, let's see. So that's all that's all fancy and good and stuff. Uh let's see. What else we got here? Uh okay, reject is gonna update expression ish. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the copy file stuff. Because we no longer use it. Because we're using the built in grunt X copy stuff. Uh, let me just, let me run a build real quick, just to double check. Let me run like a build build. Thank you, Lissa. We're very, very excited. This was a big, big one for us. Um, like we're, we're, we're really proud of this one. Um, just because of how much stuff we were able to add into it. Um, like we've been working on this for over a year and, um, yeah, this is, this is a really special one. This is a really special release for us. So. Chow's making food. Oh, go go get. Uh, oh yeah, go enjoy the food. Oh, Chow makes. Chow always makes good food. Mmm, food. I like food. I had a sandwich. I had a little. 
a little meatball sandwich today and uh, some chicken noodle soup and then some cucumber slices with some tzatziki. Oh, I love tzatziki. It's so good. Mm, nom, 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 nom. Do, 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 do. We're just finishing the new Electron build and then I'm going to, where's the uh, sandbox? I'm gonna open the sandbox. And that's good. All right. Let's go to Let's reveal in File Explorer. Go here. Go here. Here. Ooh, neat. All right. The installer's building now, doing its magic thing. Go home soon, like in three minutes soon? Nice, Liz. Hell yeah. Served as a soup? Mm, mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Oh, but jovial, but jovial. I need, I need a good uh, lemon chicken egg soup. That's what I need in my life. Like a Greek lemon chicken soup. That's, oh, that sounds delicious. Hey, we talk about food here a lot. If you're new, uh, this is what we do. We talk about food a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jovial, you get it, pal. You get it. Jovial knows all kinds of food. He makes food all the time. He makes delicious food. Food. Oh, yeah, love food. Big fan of food. All right. We'll run the setup real quick from this build. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Good, good. Cool. Um, we can escape out of that. One more, have the leftover Salisbury steaks and rice. Oh yeah. Salisbury steaks. Mm, 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 mm. -hmm. Um, all right, let's go to my overlay, get my overlay path. Just copy it, make sure it runs. Looks like it's running. Uh, let's go do a custom command, advanced mode, yes. Overlay. Uh, what do I want to do? Uh, show text. Hello. Um, do it at the top left. Run it. Hello. Perfect. Okay. I'm happy with that. We already have a dot one. Yeah, I know. I know CKY because the Max broke it. It's, I blame, I blame, we blame Steve Jobs, I think, is what we ended up doing. I think that's where we landed on that. Uh, so yeah, your stepmom makes makes that soup and she's, oh, oh, it's I love that soup. Now that's while yes, that's absolutely a great soup to have when sick. My specific go to it's just what I've always had since I was a kid is wonton soup. I love wonton soup. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Jovial, that's the soup I was talking about. That's the soup that I was talking about. That's, it's so good. It's like, so lemon I'm weird about, like in raw applications, I typically don't like it. Um, I will like lemon spritzed on my seafood. That's fine. I don't, I'm not big fan of lemonade. Um, lemon desserts, not big on, but cooked into savory applications. I love it, love it. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm not going back to show text. No, we're not debugging that right now. I'm taking copy files out. Uh, commit and push. Yeah, last week to feel better. Usually that or sizzling rice. Mm, Cause I'm not doing it right now, CKY. No, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. 
Yeah. Okay, so that's, we remove copy files. Um, man, I really want to, I really want to take, uh, oh, where are we still using FS Extra? Only a few places. I'm going to take the types out for FS Extra. Well, no, I don't, no, not yet. Not yet. Um, God, what version of Express are we on? 417. What version is latest? Oh, that's not bad. I mean, you know, it's old, but it's not, that's not bad. Oh my God. They don't, ex they don't update that anymore. They don't really update that anymore. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, Duff, what if, follow me on this, what if you did some of the chicken in the barbecue and some of them in the ranch? By the way, lemon pepper is a staple in this house. We go, we eat so much lemon pepper chicken. I buy the Badia lemon pepper seasoning in like the big container just because we eat so much lemon pepper seasoning in this house. Um, when we cook lemon pepper chicken, we'll usually do like bone in skin on chicken thighs and we'll bake them and I season them down real, real good with it. Um, and a lot of times we'll have rice with it and then the rice I will also just load down with lemon pepper seasoning just because it's so good. Love the like the lemon and the savory applications. I love it with stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, okay, uh, I took that out. Um, uh, I know Reject is doing the expressionist changes right now. Why not? See? Why not both barbecue and ranch? Exactly. Now, I... Sweet. Okay. Cool. Uh, now, Duff, I gotta ask, is there, a, is there a particular brand of honey barbecue sauce that you use? Because I do, but I want to know if you do and what it is. Lemon pepper seasoned oil. Oh, that does sound really good. That does sound really good. Lemon pepper seasoned oil fried chicken. That's it. That's, that's the tweet. Or maybe a compound butter. Yeah, lemon pepper compound butter. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You, you only use it for dipping. Oh, mmm. Mmm, honey mustard. Yeah, Bean also likes honey mustard. She's a big, big fan of honey mustard. It's her favorite for dipping her chickens. Um, okay, we have we have TypeScript. Uh, I want to look at SAS and see what the latest SAS is. I kind of want to get all of our once. Wait, was it one dot sixty nine dot seven? Ha! <laughs> nice. Um, do we have change notes? What do we have? Let's go here. I test the VARS engine. Nice. A sugar-free brand. Oh, okay. 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 I haven't heard of that. I have to check that out. Teriyaki chicken. Oh, I love teriyaki chicken. Hmm. All right, let's go down to, can I, I can't change how many I see per page, can I? No. All right, let's compare to, and this is, uh, what are we on? Five, seven dot, or five, eight dot three. Oh my God. That's so many, that's so many things. 
do do you have breaking changes overview sometimes okay let's see what we've got here um we only have a single global or default flag beginning in 162 when js is no longer allowed beginning in 163 working I don't know I know who would do that who who would do that reject that sounds like really that sounds like a just a dingus I don't know anybody that would do that I don't know, I don't know. you're barbecuing you got a teaspoon of honey top sauce oh oh yeah Electron OAuth 2 is not used anywhere anymore. Um, let's see. Yeah, I we're. I don't know that we're going to take out any of like the because I I went through and cleaned up some of the um like the runtime dependencies. We're not taking much else out of here right now, just because there's so much and the like. It's a lot easier to fix the dev process if it breaks. Um, all right, let's, we'll just, we can just do this real quick. That's fine. Author. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Correct. That's basically what happens. Rick. Bye, Pearly. Love you, Pearly. Okay, let's do this again. Something I never touch when it works. Break something when I mess with it. We we don't use it. it ours isn't like our setup with it is not terribly complicated, so I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. Um. Like, we'll see what happens. We do the cleanup. Sass. Yeah, okay, see, Sass is already done. Sass is already done. And it, it's fine. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let me do an NPM install again, just to be sure. Because I just want to make sure reject stuff made in. I'll do grunt prep again. Let's kill the bot. Alright. And... Okay, that works. That's good. Um, so, I'll go chore, sass. Uh, what are we? 1.69.7. Ah, uh, and push. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, CKY, Izzy was just saying earlier how much she really enjoys when you, when you definitely don't do things like, you know, break her brain and her code and stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else we've got up here. What cron are we on? Oh shit, we're on old cron. I need to update the types for that. Um, let's go. At, what are we on? 306 is what we're on now. 316. Break anyone, yeah. Kind of long history. Yeah, that, that, that Firebot icon. No, there's not one. Is, are we, well, what the hell's latest on that?
Uh, no. Is it, did it get deprecated? Is that what happened? I don't want, I'm going to go here, but I'm going to also go like this. Has been deprecated. This is uh, Cron provides its own type definition, so you don't need this installed. Oh, cool. Okay, well, we're getting rid of that. Um, oh, okay, so it did that with the update. Alka, hi, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. We're doing uh, tomorrow is going to be the big stream anniversary celebration. No, uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun, fun day. And a selection of American regional barbecue sauces, and they were legit. Oh, yeah, Jovial. I remember that. I remember those. Yeah, we're going to do... I'm doing some Lego tomorrow. I'm doing some potentially learning how to crochet tomorrow. It's going to be wild. Um, we we have fired the bot twice now. Uh, we've actually... Re we released the big, the big uh, update, and then we had a patch for it for Mac. Because the Mac ones wouldn't, they, they weren't launching correctly. So, I don't know getting used for the bots. It looks so shell shocked. I've <laughs> seen some stuff, man, and some things. Uh, okay, let's see. That's remove or remove types cron. Okay. We're gonna f yeah, some some of the quick stuff for uh, five six one. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. We uh, we got a lot of stuff pushed out. Um, let's see, sure. Yep. Okay. We're time traveling. It's funny because like we have a we have a channel in the. Uh, in our in the Firebot Discord that we use to monitor changes from Git uh, GitHub. So like every time there's something that happens uh, in GitHub that we want to take notice of, we get a push message from GitHub. And so um, we, uh, uh, I it's like it's just funny watching me do stuff and then like oh, look, you have a new message. It's just right there. Reject knows how to travel backwards in time. He invented it. He told me. Also, Dennis, I, I, I submit to you. Yes, it has. Dennis, you stalk that channel. I know you do. Dennis, like, I'll, I'll push something, and then like thirty seconds later. In like the expert, the mod chat, like Dennis is like, "What you doing with that?" I'm like, "Buddy, you gotta, you gotta stop that." What are you just do? Fools you sometimes when you forget that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. I it's like it's like wait, why why do I have a message? Oh right, because I I did something. Like I have one in my own Discord for a couple of my personal projects, and it's like, "Hey, you committed code." I'm like, "Yeah, I I I know. I just did it." And yet, I'm the one that set up the alerts for that. There you go. Post a link to ping. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Izzy. You're good. Oh, my God. That's it. That's it. That's the new one. That's the new one. That's the new... Perfect. Nailed it. Done. That's it. That's the one. That's our winner right there. I love it. F f perfect. No notes. Just. Mwah. Book for group projects. Everyone knows there's a commit push. <laughs> right, Alka? <laughs> Graphic design is my passion. <laughs> it's like he drew on a cloud face to hide the frown. <laughs> Congrats, you won the 
<laughs> Secret Firebot 2024 logo design contest. You win nothing. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Um, I'm not going to mess with the building stuff right now. Uh, Reject just updated the linting stuff. Um, Express hasn't updated, so what's what's the point? All right, I think that's good. I think I'm happy with that right now. Okay, now that we've gotten some of the housekeeping out of the way, let's go make these variables. Okay, so the variables that we're going to be making are user is banned and user is timed out. Okay, so let's go. This is a general one, so I'm going to leave it in the main one. Man, I, I've got to reorganize this. I I'm going to go through and refactor some of these into TypeScript too. You updated the linter, you just added linting. Uh, well, it's... Uh, it says you updated ESLint, and then you added the TypeScript stuff, so. Let's see. What was that one? Yeah, you updated ESLint. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, great job. Um, okay, we're going to make a new one. Let's take something, let's take something kind of simple, all right? Is whisper is simple. Is whisper is a simple variable that we're gonna just use as, as our template here. So we're gonna go user is, is, is banned, okay? What are you doing things? Do you get a star? Yes, you get one gold star, one gold star for reject. One gold star. That's the whole the whole gold star. Um, okay, so this is we want user is banned. Uh, we don't need triggers on this because this is something that we will check real time. Uh, we need to add usage here. Okay. Uh, in the usage, is that, do we need to add the, no, okay. No, no, okay, perfect. Because it dynamically adds the, uh, order damage, it's not a star. It could be a star. Listen, it's, listen, water, water, just, water, just let him have the, let's let him have it. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so we have user is banned. The usage is user is banned with a username. Returns true if the specified user is banned, otherwise returns false. Um, user is banned. Banned variable. Okay. All right. Perfect. This will be a what categories do we have? Um, oh, this is definitely a user one. Yep, yep. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. <laughs> yeah, the update button. Oh, the update button never got fixed. Okay. Well, we'll... That's... We'll put it on the, I'll put it on my list. Maybe I can fix it in this one. Uh, okay, user is banned. Now, we don't have any infrastructure for this uh, right now. So what I need to do is, I need to go to moderation. Let's see what I have in our moderation stuff. Ban user, unban user, add channel moderator, remove channel moderator, add VIP, remove channel VIP. Let's go put this 
above the methods for for the banning and unbanning. Okay, let's go async is user banned user ID. Use the user ID resolvable. Um, and this is a promise of Boolean because we just want to know. Um, oh, well. We'll do no, no, because I guess I can return back a null. That's fine. Um, all right, let's go. I'm going to do this. User band is user band. Uh, camel case always for our for our TypeScript and JavaScript function names. We use camel case. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's put the try catch in here. Uh, return return null. Okay. Um, uh -huh. perfect. I love that. Most of our, most users are our band. Yes, that's yes. Oh, that's, it was, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, it's nothing happened. That's fine. Z Mint, hi buddy. How are you? Good to see ya. Uh, okay. What, um, all right, let's see. Um, This equals um, this dot streamer client dot moderation dot uh, check user ban. For oh wait, is there a check? Reject. You know what I'm going to do, don't you? No, no, not that one. I don't want that. Purple. Check user ban. All right. What specific Easter egg did you put into annoy tug? Oh, Bishop, I haven't put anything into annoy tug yet. Um, I may I changed the login system, so that's going to annoy tug enough, and that's that is what is enough for me. Also, hi Bishop, good to see you, pal. That's what I'm looking forward to most is just waiting for him to yell at me on uh on Monday. No, I'm saying reject. Look, 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 look what I've done. Look what, look what I have done now. I have, I have come to the, uh, the twerple source code. That's like getting yelled at. No, it's not that I like getting yelled at. It's just that sometimes I enjoy when People get just just enough to want to yell at me and yell at me, but also like they're not mad. They're just like, Gah! you know, one of those kind of things. Okay, uh, get banned users. Um, streamer ID. Uh, let's go. User ID. User ID. Okay. 
We await this. All right, I gotta. Okay. Okay. The aeroglyph and the triple. Listen, it's fine. I ha I like I like my ligatures, most of them. I like most of my ligatures. Listen, the arrow, like the fat aeroglyph, it's personally I love it. Bishop, thanks for the lurk, buddy. Thank you so much. Working on the thing you tried to do last night. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, you know what? No, you want this to be a, a string? Fine, I will... Fine. Hello. Afterwards? Alright, let's see. God damn it, Alka. Okay, uh, return response dot data dot sum. Let's see, uh, you want B for ban, B dot, um, user ID equals user ID. Does this return back a user ID resolvable? No, it's a string. Mm. Do I already have that? Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. What the heck? Okay. Uh, actually, I might move this down into here just for funsies. Okay, fine. We have that. <clears throat> okay. And the expiry. Okay, perfect. Are these bars and it's expressionist that, that's broke. No, it's fine. It's, it's not going to take me that long. Mostly this is the, in I just got to do the infrastructure. Ah, uh, damn it. Fingers, do, do better. Thank you. Channel. Okay. Triple equals, we don't, we don't do triple equals on nulls, reject. We do double equals. We only do double equals on nulls because if it comes back as undefined, then it will still evaluate to nullish, but it won't. I thought we only, we only do. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I thought you were. Okay, okay, sorry, my bad, my bad. My bad. That one's on me. Oh my god. Okay. Hello. Oh yeah, what do you need? Double A's? Okay. Oh god. That's well that's one. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that's a kitty. Oh, I got caught on the cable. Yeah. 
There we go. Hello. What you doing? You want some pets? You want some pets? Oh yeah. Now we'll give her one. In a little bit. Hi, Skip. Oh, she was taking a nap. She was a sleepy cat. <laughs> Share stream. You're better saying my bad. <laughs> Fritz, for the band, for the band, for the band. Ah. Okay, um, let's see. String or number or, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's, that works. Okay. Um, so we return. Yep, yep, yep. If they were banned, yep, yep, yep. Okay. And now I want, I guess I don't need that there, but I have it anyway. All right, now is user timed out. No more object object. User is timed out or false if they're Unless if they're banned or not timed out. There we go. Beautiful. Could I combine this into a single thing? Yes. Do I think there's value in it being separate? Also, yes. Okay. Um, let's see, const user name equals trigger dot metadata dot username. Oh, wait, no, because we're going to uh, user names. Right, never mind. We got that. Uh, if user name equals null. Or username equals empty string. We return false. I love that the linter does that stuff for us now, like adding brackets and shit. Hmm. I love that so much. All right, now we go. Oh, this needs to be an async evaluator. Uh, hey, I mean, I guess we do do this already, but like, evaluators run async, don't they? Okay, yeah. All right, yeah, we we have, I, I should have known, we have like a, a, a hundred of them that do it, but I just wanted to be sure. Okay, uh, return, uh... Let's see, I want, I need import which API from, nope, uh, API, okay. API dot moderation dot is user banned. Um, username, false, okay. <laughs> Jesus, oh, you two are so cute. You two are adorable. All right, so user's ban returns true if the specified user's ban, otherwise returns false. Come down here, if the username is nothing, we return false. Uh, otherwise we check the, oh shit, we gotta do, 
is our ID equals await which API dot users dot get user by name username user dot i dot id there we go um does this return back a null on failure i don't know that it does Uh, mm, mm. Okay. Dang, reject. That's, that's cold, buddy. That's cold. Well, I don't know if it returns back a null. I, it might throw. Well, does it throw? Let's find out. How do we do this? We do this. We do get user by name. Hello. Okay. Um. Okay. It does return back a null. Then that's fine. Then I'm fine with that. Okay. Um. Eh. All right. I can type, I swear. <clears throat> Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty cat. Oh, that's a kitty cat. All right, let's see what we've got here. Hmm, so I don't understand this. Uh, so reject. Yeah, I can. Yes, you're right. I can control click to go to defs, but when I go to the def for the twerple call, I know it says no, but I like to be doubly sure. I like to just double check to make sure that I get what I'm expecting. That's why I go to the code. To go, I just, I, I, it's, it's just me trying to like, I just want to be extra sure, you know, want to have my bases covered. Bonk.gif, nice. Uh, okay. Username, da, 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 return false. If user is null, return false. Then we get that. Oh, return false. I like it. I like it. The actual code, essentially code docs defs. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Okay. That's the user is banned one. And now, let's copy pasta that, and we'll make user is timed out. Now we'll go users timed out. Currently banned. Not just timed out. It's currently timed out, otherwise returns false. Okay. User timed out. Okay. It's because your body your body yes, my body yearns. Uh 
Bye, Reject. Love you. Have fun with, with uh, Dyson Sphere. Let's hear it all. Kind of feel weird and kind of wrong. Yeah. Is he coming from the C-sharp world? It feels very wrong to me. Because objects can be null, but then again, in recent versions of C-sharp, you can force nullable things to... There's like new rules around nullables. It's really weird. It's really weird. Okay. Um, here we go. Where we have two null types. We have null and we have undefined. So, oh, oh, sweet girl. Loaf's down here chirping at me. Hi, chirp, chirp. Oh, hello. That's a good meow. Oh, that's a good pet. Oh, very good. Good job. Oh, yeah, that's good pets. Good pets. On Discord, really? Oh, yeah. Oof. Oof. Yeah. The Discord scams are are high. They sure are. All right now, it looks like we've got our variables built out. Okay. Um, happy about that. Now we go here. And the last thing that we need to do is actually load them up. So we will do user is banned, user is timed out. Boy, eventually I'm going to refactor this whole thing, reject. Just the whole thing. Enough because you had a VM already set up for things like that. Oh, yeah, that sucks. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, well, uh, what do we have here? We have the new methods in the... What a... I like that. Then we'll come down here. Either not banned or only timed out. There's a subdir and then have an exporter file instead of a monolith list. Exporter file for each subdir. That'd be nice. Um, I was kind of thinking something along the lines of the way we do with integrations, like the OBS integration is a great one where we load them up by actual, we actually do the import from the VARs from the actual type, and then just register it that way. That way we get the benefit of knowing that the names are correct because then it's, you know, but then if we, if we nest that into subders, then that works too. We just pull in a subdir that ex each subdir exports like an array of them. And we just pull them in from that. Uh, okay. I think this is good. Let's start it up. Um, <laughs> let's see, what could we do? What could we do? How can we test this? I have an idea. Um, all right, so I have several bots banned in my channel just because I don't want to deal with it in the, the the list, and I don't, you know, I don't want I just don't want to deal with it at all, okay? Um, so let's open up here. 
go to my commands and I'll open my test command. Okay. In my test command, we have a log message. And let's go user is banned. We'll throw that one in there. Okay. Timed out. What are you kids doing in my house? Oh, never mind. This is going to work out. This is going to work out really well. <clears throat> okay. Um, hi, Cracko. How are you, Cracko? Cracko, would you follow me into this very not at all suspicious looking box that's definitely not being held up by a stick with a string tied to it? And, um,. Because that would be wonderful if you could do that. All right. So user is banned. False is timed out. False. Okay. So that didn't work. Hmm. Um. User is banned. User is timed out. You gotta be box say less. Okay, maybe I have to try something else. Hmm. I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Cracko is timed out. Cracko, <laughs> Cracko got timed out for sixty nine seconds. <laughs> oh, <mwah. laughs> uh, uh, beautiful. I'm I'm keeping that one for later. Uh, I have no mouth that I must scream. <laughs> oh, CKY, it's because it's Cracko. He's uh, he's been timed out before. Actually, he got banned twice now. He's been banned twice from my channel. <laughs> oh. uh, we we we. Those are those are rookie numbers. <laughs> Uh, we 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 would not ban Krakow for real until he comes in and he smells up the place, which sometimes he does. The script is never pushed to it. Oh, that sounds about right, Dennis. Okay, so we know the timed out works, and if I run it again now, because Krakow is no longer timed out, we get false. That's great. Okay, now I need to find, I have to find like some user that's banned. I gotta go see if like, I gotta find one that still exists. Uh, like where is one of these bot accounts that still exists, I guess? Is this one of them? Does this, does this work? Why is it still returning us? Hmm. Uh, I want to go see something. Let's go to, let's go, let's go hit a break point. Cause I'm, I'm wondering if, if we're getting back the data at all on that. Oh, well, I didn't hit the break point, so. Oh, you know what I bet it is? 
I bet I know exactly what it is. We hit here. Yep. User doesn't exist, so it's not running. Um, okay. Hmm. This person, you need one? No, I don't want to do that to you. I don't want to do that to you. All right, I'll ban reject real quick. All right, let me ban reject, um, and then we'll go and test it now. Okay, run that, and that's the test. Let's go check the console, and there we go. Okay, cool. There we go. Did it not unban him? Why did it? Oh, I un... What? Oh my god. I love that the slash commands don't work in the Twitch chat. Our slash commands in Firebot work better than they do in Twitch chat. Okay. Thank you, Reject, for volunteering as tribute. It worked. We're good. Add a shared mod note if you have a shared ban list. Oh my god. I should. I should do that, yeah. Let me go. Um, let's see. Mod comments. This was a test ban. He's okay. <laughs> what? You volunteered as tribute, and besides, I know you. <laughs> it's it's funnier that way. <laughs> Here, I'll just uh, gonna, gonna drop that in there. Listen, I'm just... <laughs> just throw that in the fucking dev chat. <laughs> oh, the auto ban will now make it so that he can't type in other chats. Well, yeah, but if I unban him, I mean, it should be okay. Eh, it's fine. I don't, I'm, only, I'm only sharing my ban info with a couple of people right now, so... Let me see. Yeah, the only other person, actually the only other person that actively streams who I'm sharing my ban info with right now is Cracko. This man's very good for his own amusement. Cracko, go unban reject for, well, I don't know. You you probably don't have mine, like, automatically do it. And just... <laughs> <sighs> so the the note or like the the action isn't removed like if you unban someone the action doesn't get removed like it depends on how you have yours set up in your channel so when you receive ban it shared ban info from someone else's channel sometimes you will like it depends on what you want to do so let me go look at the setting for it um so, when restricted messages from... No, I don't want to go to most channel. Let's come back here. Um, yeah, so you can share mod comments. Um, and then you have, like... It doesn't ban them, but it can restrict them. So... You can either set it up to where it will monitor their chats when someone um, someone who shares ban info bans with you. Um, it doesn't. It, it 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 can either monitor them so you get like a little thing in chat that's like, hey, we're monitoring this user, or you can restrict it so their chats come in and you can see them, but they don't go out to the rest of chat. They don't ban though. They don't automatically ban for another person's channel. Um, 
So, yeah, it's fine. I, I only listen. Like I said, I only have two, and one of them is one of them is the one that I timed out earlier. So it's fine. Okay, this is good. I'm happy with this. Uh, this works. So we're gonna uh, add user is banned and user is timed out. Oh, <laughs> I've been banned from Dave and Buster's. Okay, okay, all right. Happy days, happy times. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 gonna get in about five minutes. It's gonna be gone. Uh, all right. Uh, what number? What was that? Twenty-three thirty. Yeah. Okay. And. We're going to do that. I'm going to commit it and push it to the V5 branch. Uh, I, Dennis, I think that's, I think that's true, but I don't know off the top. Like I, I don't know for sure off the top of my head. Um, all right. Well, uh, we're going to call it there. Uh, I think we've had an incredibly productive day, everyone. Um, we released 560. We released 560.1. And we got some, some cleanup done. We got some, we got a new feature implemented. We got some updates to our infrastructure that are great. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with all the stuff that we did today. We had a, we had a great time today, I think. Um, Got to start on, on 5.61. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. This is good. This is great stuff. All right. I can go ahead and close all these. We're all good. And there we go. Can we look at show tech? No, I'm not looking at show techs right now. Absolutely not. We talked, uh, we talked about version 6. Yeah. Your face is great stuff. Ooh, get wrecked. Reverse. Reverse. We had an emotional moment about the community. We did. It's true. We did. Um, all right. And I think that's going to do it. Oh, no. It's it's absolutely because of you, Krakow. You're the, you're the sole reason why I'm ending stream now. It's just because of you. Viv, you were here earlier. Quack, quack. I love that it plays again. Viv, I don't want to hear it. You were here at the beginning of stream, so whatever. Hey, can we talk about the show text effect? Oh, Reject, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, we can. If you want to talk about it, yeah, we can. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Uh, well, thank you all, all for hanging out today. Today was a really fun and special day for us um, and the Firebot team. And uh, I'm glad that we got the new update out. Um, once again, remember, please read through the release notes carefully um, and check out the article on the new login system um, just to understand how it affects channel point rewards for the update. Um, if you do have any questions or run into any issues, be sure to join the Discord. Um, if you need links to that, they're on... I can type they're on the website um, so you can head over to firebot.app for uh, to download the app to head to our github to join our discord all of that fun stuff um, if you would like sweet merch like my firebot shirt that I'm wearing today um, we also have a merch shop set up so if you want to go there there's the link to the merch shop um, so there you go read through the release notes <laughs> what have you Cracko, buddy, I know, I also cannot read, so I feel this pain. Um, so, but yes, thank you all all so much for hanging out. Today was a great, great day. Um, thank you earlier for all the love for the subs, the bits. Uh, we got the raid from Lissa, the raid at the very beginning from Matt. Um, yeah, today was a fantastic day, so thank you all all so much. <gasps> Lissa, hey Lissa, did the auto shout out because I restarted the bot. 
That's funny. Um, Melissa, thank you. No you. All right, let's go see who we're gonna go hang out with. Uh, let's see, let's see, what do we got going on here? What do we got? Uh... You know, let's go see uh, someone who I know is a Firebot user, um, and I actually got to meet at TwitchCon. You s <laughs> yes, also wash your butt. Um, someone I got to meet at TwitchCon, who I know is a Firebot user. Uh, we're going to raid Ilana. Let me get, if I can... Um, she's playing RimWorld, which she tends to do quite a bit of. Um, so let's go raid her, show her lots of love. Um, there are the raid message. Top one is for subscribers. The bottom one is for anyone who chooses to use it. Um, thank you all again so much for hanging out. I had a, I had an absolute blast today. Uh, I would like to do more uh, Firebot Friday streams. Uh, we'll see about what kind of scheduling goes on with that. But um, Hopefully we can maybe try to make this a regular thing like the team did many, many moons ago. Um, so thank you all again for hanging out. Um, I will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time for my stream anniversary. It's three years. I'm hanging out. I'm doing Legos and crochet and games and maybe more Firebot stuff. I don't know. I don't have a real plan, but we're going to wing it and see what happens. Um, but until then, please remember, as always, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.